Moving right along, we got Otto from Otto and George in studio. It's the Opie and Anthony show, by the way. Anyway, I enjoyed your um, buttermilk sardine segment. It was, ah. I was having my bowl of Lucky Charms with Diet Pepsi and <laughs> washing it down with a chicken salad sandwich with Ben Gay on wheat <laughs> toast. Boy, boy, I got here just in time. You guys are completely out of ideas. <laughs> Jesus. I produced that segment. Jesus. <laughs> but it's so I, much... I missed you guys, man. Yeah, we miss you, Otto. Yeah. That's some of the greatest really, treats of all time. Do I ever really pop into your head? Do you guys ever think about me Absolutely. when I'm not right yeah, in front of, of you? Or, Absolutely. Yeah. Are you just busy shoving wads of cash into empty paint cans <laughs> like Vito on The Sopranos <laughs> late at night with your piles of money? <laughs> <laughs> I got your DVDs. We throw them in. Really? Thank yes, you, of course I do. I okay. love Otto. Thank you, man. So you're on the Facebook, too. I am. Yeah. Saw that. Is that good? Yeah, that you know. Thing? We hooked up. We're pals now on there. <laughs> Does George have his own page? <laughs> George gets a book out. <laughs> George should have his own page. Yeah. You, know? you, should, you should be working two Facebook pages. Yeah. One for yourself, one for George. God. Yeah. Are you guys like, uh, what kind of friends are you? Are you are you doing the tickle fights and all that other weird now, stuff they do on Facebook? I ignore every one of those things. Yeah. Ooh, a poke. You got a present. You got a, a kiss. Wait, wait, wait. What's you a, got a heart. You got a this. You got. What's a poke? I don't know. I just delete them. Yeah. And then everybody trying to get me into that stupid mafia thing. What mafia thing? It's like a game, a mafia mob war game on on uh, Facebook, and I'm just like ignore, ignore. Become <laughs> a part of my family, and I'll do. Shut up. What? Ignore. When are they going to have the technology to put the image of a computer onto a widescreen TV, or do they have that they yet? They can now. Oh, yeah. They can already? Oh, oh. yeah, they got that. Because yeah. every time there's something great on YouTube, I go, I want to see this bigger, you know? Oh, yeah. They've yeah. already worked uh, on that? Uh, oh, good. I, I, my screen is, is the biggest. I got an old flat screen TV. You know what, though? My, my, my computer screen is an old TV that's easy, not old. It's flat. It's this big. But, but it's a computer screen, or it's a TV, separate TV screen? It's, it's like a monitor. Same you pop thing it now. in, and really? the quality's yeah. wonderful. Oh, okay. Okay. Progressive scan. Yeah. We're, we're living in great times, techno, techno, Are technology we? wise. Yeah, mm. really. Yeah. Mm. The uh, the thing is with YouTube videos, though, if you blow them up the size of a big screen TV, it's going to be all pixelated. A little bit. Because oh, they can it was a little, but press the crap out. out of it. Drop out of clarity. That's all yeah. right. Yeah, but you just back up and you and you squint a little bit, and man, it's like high def. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Try it. You think I'm crazy? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been here in a while since your uh, Obama won. I know you weren't uh, too oh, yeah. happy about him. Nah, Obama possibly. president, nah. Yeah. He loves Obama. Yeah, what? he just doesn't know it yet. No, yeah, and I don't think I'm going to know it for at least four and perhaps eight years. I'm tired of the celebration. You know, stop the. He can't dance. Stop dancing and get on with your job of being president. You know? Yes, really. That's it's, how I feel. And this whole celebration thing is like. It's Enough too show already. business. You're a politician. Yes. Fix whatever, though, everything that's wrong. They're always try it. The White yeah. House had to actually the White House had, had, had to put yeah, out some so. kind of statement where they're going to try to curtail merchandising of the president. Oh, because it's gotten ridiculous with the people hawking T-shirts and buttons. Yeah, and but stuff. doesn't that help the economy? They should just allow that to continue. Not down here in Midtown, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you go uptown, every corner you could buy a T-shirt, a thing with him with a halo yeah. nailed to a cross, whatever you want to see. Uh, the new Messiah. Do black yeah. people really think that their, li their lot in life is going to change now. This guy's a politician. He doesn't yeah. care. Let me let me uh, ask some of the uh, old ladies up yeah. in the Bronx that are being pummeled <laughs> by uh, some uh, uh, young gentlemen. Uh, if things have changed since Obama's been in, they got uh, they, they got videotaped. They're playing all morning on the news of this lovely gentleman that is going up and just pummeling old ladies. Yeah. And stealing their money and mm. uh, doing whatever else. It is the first. He is the first black guy to be followed by security outside of a department store. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. I thought that was good. <laughs> that is good. Ah, <laughs> uh, nice. Where are you going to be, Otto? You get the plug in. Treehouse. Uh, God, I got I got well, that's, why, that's why you're here. Let's be honest I, with I each other. I have a performance to set. No, I didn't come here to plug. I, I came here because I, I feel like I'm vanishing when I'm not on this show. I'm just <laughs> I'm just somewhere out there in the B room uh, universe. And then when I come here, I feel like I, you know, I'm pertinent again. It's oh, yeah. It's, you mm -hmm. you played at Treehouses, right, Jim? Yeah, Treehouses yeah. in Saddle with Denbury. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they lo- Stanford. Stanford. Oh, Stanford. This Saturday, Otto and George, Treehouse Comedy Club, Stanford, Connecticut, treehousecomedy.com for tickets. And all my Long Island friends on <laughs> February 18th at the brokerage. In Belmore. Brokerage, I haven't yeah. been there in a while. It's yeah. A nice little uh, spot there. It's nice. They fixed it up. It's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's good. Good show. What else is going on with you, Otto? A lot of, Took a, lot a trip of... to California with Trish. We took yeah? nine days... Driving from wow. San Francisco to L.A. That is the to Vegas. That is one of the coolest rides you could ever do. I know, but I was checking in and out of hotels every two days, and I got. I said to myself, "This is like doing a gig without getting paid at the end of it." <laughs> I'm exhausted, and I have less money. I'm constipated from the change of water. You know, I was miserable by the end of the trip. I saw Penn and Teller in Vegas. They were pretty, they treated me good. Yeah, those They're guys. Nice guys, yeah. Rule, Did you man. take the Pacific Coast Highway, man? Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. that was a little scary at, at times. It, yeah. it is right with the cliffs and stuff. Yeah, and you and you stop and you you can hear the seals like a quarter mile down. Yeah, it's just it's, uh, the, it's just a pubic hair from death on some of those cliffs. <laughs> yeah, there. and people are like driving up behind us and like yeah, they're you know, mad because you're not going stuff. eighty. How many people the, just turns? fly off that road? Yeah, uh, like uh, they just yeah. sail right out there into eternity. <laughs> they just, just sailed right out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. got to be a, just an amazing amount of people that just perish on I, that roadway. I went to the Hearst Castle. Boy, did I feel poor after seeing how that guy Oh, lived. yeah, huh? Oh, my God. He had a, a swimming pool the size of a football field. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, he had the Marx Brothers over there and all these rich people. He, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, some God. Symbionese Liberation Army pictures of uh, yeah, <laughs> Patty I, Hearst. It didn't even up. occur to me, Patty Hearst, <laughs> until later on. Yeah. Because you were allowed to ask questions on the tour, and I just kept asking him about, um, you know, I was I was trying to do fatty Arbuckle jokes. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. And the, the lady wasn't having it. She was like, "Oh, well, Mr. Hurst was a uh, Mr. Hurst. He's just protecting his name." What about the uh, Charlie Chaplin uh, uh, stuff? Also, uh, underage, wasn't that big, yeah. that big scandal with the murder on the boat? Right. And okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about that, you <laughs> tour guide liar? <laughs> he had a yeah. big pool. Did he, have, did he have Abbott and Costello over? And then Lou went, "Hey, that's a good idea for the yard." <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Abbott, there's a kid in my <laughs> in my. <laughs> that's why they couldn't get him out. He was sitting there. He would have been fine if he could have spit it out. <laughs> Abbott, there's a kid in my <laughs> in my. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Lou? <laughs> Is it kid in your pajamas? <laughs> no, in my. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, little wispy hairs in the skimmer. <laughs> 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 Jesus. Oh, oh my God. Uh, yeah. You want to you drain it and give it a good acid wash after a kid perishes in your pool. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, well, pretty dark. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Just, just a tad. They really enjoy that, too. Um, let them enjoy. They really uh, enjoy that one. It's very golden. You can see them sparkling in the sun when you pick that skimmer basket out. <laughs> oh. A little patent leather <laughs> shoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it is just awful, but yeah. Yeah, screw them. It's old. Old, hmm. old stuff. Enough time's gone by. Yeah. I don't care. They made a ride out of the Titanic. What yeah. do you, you know, what do you want from me? Right. Yeah, you remember that whole t- Titanic ride? The yeah. big. You'd, you'd drive around, and occasionally they have these uh, street fairs. Well, and it's right after the parties. movie came out, so oh. it was a, it was a hot thing to get for your kids. And party. it's an actual it's it's the the bow or the stern of the Titanic, who of the right. Titanic, and it's a balloon slide. It's one of those oh. huge inflatable things, and kids climb up and slide down the deck <laughs> into water. Yeah, and it's like, but did you understand that? Thousand uh, and some odd people horrible died. Death. Yeah. A horrible death. Uh, yeah. And now enough time went by where it's a here ride. It Otto, here it is. Yeah, there you, it is. You can bounce off the smokestacks yeah, and everything. Sure, See? have a little fun with it. Whee! Just slide down the deck into water, just like Slip the real people did. Yeah. From Hasbro. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's, that's acceptable now. And wow. enough time goes by. Enough sure. Enough time goes Why by. Not? You got to wonder if, you know, eventually there'll be rides from uh, other tragedies. It's just, uh, look at that. There's a little kid sliding down the deck. Having yeah. a, just having a blast, mm-hmm. and and just years ago, people actually were doing that and dying. And if you get the <laughs> really good slide, you slide right into oh, the water. Good. Fatalities, good. That's yeah. always, that's good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, you know, I, I always put the History Channel on to it. like try and fall asleep before I do this show because it's very hard for me to turn my brain off. Mm-hmm. There was a thing last night about um, Hitler's bodyguards. Oh, that drunk. 
Yeah, it was, it was big, really good. Drunk guy. They had some good audio on Hitler. They were uh, he was talking to one of his guys, Himmler or something. And he was going, "I'm going to kill six million Jews and twelve circus clowns." The guy goes, "Circus clowns?" He goes, "See, nobody cares about the Jews." <laughs> Oh my God! You're, you're saying they're dark. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. Sorry. I really no, can't. It's, it's, it's all good. I'm man. the same way though. I can't fall asleep without <laughs> no. something on. It didn't work. I was tossing and turning. I, I, yeah. You know, when I have nothing to do, I sleep like in a second. But when I have to get some rest to do something, my brain won't. You're shut not alone. Yeah. Everyone's like that, Otto. You guys must have Stand your bodies must be able to shut down now after uh, all these years. No, no, you wish. Ah. Never. I just got back into kind of a normal schedule. I was coming home. At like noon, what time did you I would hit go, the uh, hey last night, for instance. To last go. night was uh, uh, I don't know about nine thirty. Really? Ten, but that was normal. But for for about two weeks before this, yeah, I was going home at noon, sleeping until eight at night, staying up till two thirty in the morning, and sleeping a couple of hours before the show. Oh, nap. So I yeah. became nocturnal. No, my my the bulk of my sleep was from noon till eight at night, and then I was wow. up all night just kind of hanging out, drinking. Well, that's not bad. As long as yeah, you get your eight hours at some point. You know what though? From eight till some till like two thirty in the morning, no one's around. There's nothing right. to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go out because then you know. I'll but be don't out. you find your 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 brain is functioning better if you're up for a few hours than if you just crawl out of bed right to the microphone? Isn't it better? Oh to be yeah, up yeah. I yeah. did notice that. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to wake up. I uh, got a glue on my brain when I first yeah. wake up. Well, you're, you're not yeah. used to this. Either. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the funny shirt that I wear. This is I'm a bitch without my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, Adam, you're you're a big movie buff. Oh yeah, I just saw the wrestler. Man, was that moving? You liked it? I or thought it was unbelievable performance. Oh, Jim, I got to show you this. Check this out. Oh, you got a picture of uh, wow. Wow. Hey, Sorry. a sign Nicholson. Yeah, that's from, great. Uh, yeah. Can, I, can I see who's next? Yeah. Can I? Can I? No, no, no. Don't no. Why? Uh, I no, just want to no, look no. at it. No, you know, he would never. I got it. What are you jealous? Killed. I got it. Why are, you, uh, like, why are you showing off, making us all sad? I thought Jim would like to of see course. it. Of course. I yeah. thought it was show and tell today. I brought something in. Yeah. Uh you like the wrestler though, huh? It, what, you didn't like it? No, I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I mean, really powerful. But they're saying it's this, powerful. it's this comeback movie. Like, what other roles is he going to be able to play with that uh, face He's going to do everything? nine and a half Nelsons next. Time, <laughs> right, <probably. laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, like the, the they're saying. of paper cuts. They're saying like John Travolta, the big comeback. How, what, what is yeah, this going to lead to? Yeah, what did Burt Reynolds do after Boogie Nights? Zero. Zero. Yeah, they always uh, talk about that. I and mean, he was, Burt Reynolds shows he could. Deliver when he's got a good script, but you know there's no there's no scripts. You see, Slumdog. Slum Slumdog. No, 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 I heard about that. It's good. Uh, is that good? Millionaire. I didn't like it as much. I, I liked it a lot. I didn't think it lived up to the hype. What about That's Eastwood's sure. movie? Did you see that one? I liked it. That was great. I just saw the good parts on YouTube. It was, oh, it's funny. Every racist oh, mark out funny. of his mouth. He's a grumpy old man. It's a full metal man. jacket, and yeah. then and then an, like an action movie. It was great. I liked it. Very predictable. He though. was saying that uh, the vanishing American, like eventually everybody's going to be brown, black, and, and yellow, and you know there's going to be no more guys that look like us eventually. Mm -hmm. well, that's you know? pretty obvious. That's yeah. the dream of some people. Yeah, <laughs> no more white man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It, that was uh, a I, great I like performance. Adult films, like the wrestle was an adult adult film. It's not like children and you know talking dog hotel and all that. <laughs> 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 Even when that I was crap. a kid, I didn't like that stuff. I, I always like. Death Wish and stuff. You know, when I was a kid, it was all, all about sneaking into an R-rated film. Oh, I was cursey. not interested in anything PG. <laughs> you know, none of that Disney crap for you. No. Yeah. No, not really. So you're not going to go see Mall Cop? <laughs> oh, he's very talented. He's very <laughs> handsome. <laughs> I, I don't know. Hey, you like? Uh, I don't. You, I don't like Pixar animation. Do you watch that stuff? Love Pixar. You, you mean computer animate? Yeah. yeah. No, I like, prefer the old organic claymation. You know, King Kong, the original. Yeah. I'm more traditional. Yeah. Really? The they Pixar move, where they move like Michael J. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those Pixar films are fantastic. Are they really? I th like, what's a good one to start with if I'm just going to see one? The Toy Story ones. Toy Story's good. Up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What, what's some of those other Pixar movies? Uh, Cars. Huh? Mars, oh, yeah, Cars. Monster right. Inc. Monster Inc.'s good. Cars was good. Cars, okay. Yeah. Toy Story 2. Yeah. Mm. Toy Story 2. And they got the new one. What is it called? Incredible. Up. Up. Up is the new one coming out. <laughs> what voice is that? Oh, that's oh, our man. politician you friend. Know what? Oh. <laughs> this is, yes, you know what? It's it, worth playing. It is so worth it's just It's overplayed. 
Auto up to speed on this one. Okay. No, this is never overplayed, Opie. Believe me. <laughs> this clip can never be overplayed. What is he, on meds or something? He just sounds like a dullard. No, this uh, this politician, I, I forgot what the debate was about. It was about beer, obviously. Do we have the long clip? A higher. We need the long clip. Alcohol content in beer. Oh. Yes, yes. In Alabama. They were debating <laughs> a higher alcohol content. And one of. Th this is actually <laughs> a politician. Oh. This is actually a politician that was elected to an office hmm. by his constituency. He's yeah. having some kind of press conference or something to try okay. to get this this done for his state. Or and his... Uh, he's got a crony that I guess helps him out at the end yeah. when he can't quite get a, a thought together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cut I have is 21 seconds. Where's the long clip? Maybe this is the whole clip. Okay. I'll give it a play. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? I mean, the beer we got drank pretty good, don't it? I ain't never heard nobody complain about the uh, beer we have. It drank pretty good. Jeez. Budweiser. Uh, what's the name of some of them other beer? <laughs> Budweiser and what else? Miller. Wow. Miller. Mm -hmm. Cool. It drank pretty good, don't it? <laughs> Miller. Wow. Cool. It's one of our favorite clips, Otto. <laughs> Mushmouth. This is a politician. Blue Ribbon. Shameful. Miller. Miller. Mill, Dinkalago. The uh, beer we have, <laughs> it drank pretty good. That little Artois. <laughs> That's a toughie. Mars de Bras. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Uh, Chamay. <laughs> deep deep <laughs> South, this guy's from the uh, Deep South. Oh, right? the Deep South. No, he's from Maine, Otto. Okay. <laughs> yes, he's a politician. <laughs> Uh, it, it reminds me of the other beer clip, too, that we haven't played in a while. The murder one? Listen to this. They was all over a beer. They was up there had a beer that they didn't have no beer. And they, and they won a beer. They were hanging around to get a beer. Called, the mailman gave me a dog. I was just, they were all over a beer. Guilty! They took his beer and they shot him. And they shot and him. they shot him. Well, of course. Over a beer. I, uh, th this is why I always say we can never, ever quite really sync up as um, a one, one people yeah. in this nation because there are certain things that I guess we do as white people that black people don't understand and there are certain things that black people do that white people just cannot understand or be party uh, uh, to or be part of. I don't, like, I watch movies where it's like just a group of black guys and they're hanging out and they're talking and stuff and I, I just think there's no way I could fit into that conversation. Oh, They're just throwing around some cool slang and everything and... Their, their clothes and what they're doing and how they're treating bitches and stuff like that. And I'm just like, how can whitey fit into that? And then you got your whitey thing, like my activities, what I like doing, how I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. And I don't see like, you know, unless you're you're a, a black guy that's grown up in a predominantly white household like Obama, uh, can actually understand and and fit into that. Most of them are probably just trying to fit into the pack, and they'd love to go to Banana Republic with you. Yeah. But they're just well. trying to be all gangsterish just to fit in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, no, I, I... Half of them are probably nerdy. There's got to be I don't nerds. think so. Yeah. I'm sure they are, but I think they're more gangster than just, like, our well, gangster guys. You know, their nerds beat our gangster guys. Unless, you know, you're talking about the Italian mob. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. It's just this whole lifestyle thing where it's so separate to me. I don't understand a lot of what is going on. Like, I watch, uh, you watch on YouTube and you see some videos of this guy. This one guy was driving his, his one of his bitches in, uh, down in Detroit and he's videotaping the neighborhood and they're talking about it. And I'm like, I don't, first of all, I don't understand what he's saying. Hmm. Secondly, I we couldn't do this. And the way he's treating his bitch, mm -hmm. like, shut the, shut the F up, bitch. Hmm. Bitches. It's a, just a different world. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to treat that woman like that. How great would that be? Yeah. Shut up, bitch. Who wouldn't yeah. want to say that? <laughs> but then you get, you know, you get yelled at. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you do. I would. They're not as afraid to go to the slammer for spousal abuse because they're going to see all their other best friends in the home. Yeah, yeah, that's they, another you know, thing. Like it's the whole... more part of their normal life is you're in prison, you're out of prison, you're, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're it's, not, a, it's not a big deal to go away for a while. We got a question from Eric in Ontario for oh, Anthony. Eric, Canadian. you're on the Opie and Anthony show. How's it going? Good, man. Uh, Anthony, do you base all your uh, racial opinions off of movies? Off of movies? Yeah. Um, no, I, uh, a lot of them, because it's kind of like a, a reflection of, and I'm not talking about like watching House Party or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, a reflection of, of the community, 
You know, you watch movies uh, based on whitey, and you get kind of the whitey angle. You watch movies based on black people, and you get kind of a black angle. Like, like a movie like that, Menace to Society, things like that. Colors. Um, uh, colors. Good colors, movie. Colors. colors. You watch things great. like that. Movie, and, right? Yeah. And it's not, uh, that isn't out of the question that people do talk like that, act like that. I know it's a drama, so there's, there's a lot more action in it than, than probably would be in the normal run-of-the-mill life of a black gentleman in South Central. But I couldn't imagine living in that lifestyle. So that, they, I can't find common ground. Yeah. I can't find common ground. We're a separatist society, really. We really are. It's got to do with age, too. I'm, I'm sure a guy like Morgan Freeman looks at those kids and just goes, what the hell? You know, what are they doing? You yeah, know? well, Bill Cosby's always been Co very yeah, vocal Co on, yeah. on mm -hmm. that and say, pull your pants up and yeah. you know, speak uh, properly. And, and, and yeah, But I don't know. It's just this you whole... You have a lot in common with them. You're gaudy. You like guns. You drive an oversized vehicle. You like to bang young chicks. <laughs> that you, is true. You, you completely have everything in common with them. Yeah. The, 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 the difference is I do it all legally. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's my vehicle. Oh. My guns are registered. <laughs> uh, the girls aren't under 18. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid, frightened white man. <laughs> exactly. Let's go to John in Indiana. John, we're hanging with Otto and George today, who's going to be at uh, the Treehouse Comedy Club in Stanford. Uh, this Saturday, treehousecomedy.com. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, I want to get a linger longer with uh, Boo Got Shot. Well, we're heading toward a break. You want to do Boo Got Shot today? Boo Got Shot. You've heard Boo Got Shot, right, Otto? I have That's a very famous clip. I haven't yet, no. You want to do it with the translation or without the translation? I like without. All right. There's a, <laughs> Figure it out yourself. Otto, there's a, there's a murder that went down, okay. and they got an eyewitness to Boo getting shot. We got it yet? And uh, this is how she uh, described what she saw. Thank you. Who got shot? She was like a back. real bad nation. Pictures, they got shot. They got shot. I said, who, who? She said, Boo got shot. Boo got shot. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. We just saw it. My sister had called somebody up here. She called my cousin, Punk, and just stayed up. She called her, and Punk had told her that she was on the phone with police. And Chi Chi, she had left out, and she went and got in her car. She bailed out. And when she left out, then when I heard the gunshot again, and when I heard the gunshot, and I seen some boy had run and the building no back that way. He ran in that building. I seen that car just flew off, and then I seen a long gun, a big old gun in the car. Yeah, my sister cousin. You called police and they said an ambulance. A <laughs> ambulance. Call my Bam sister cousin an ambulance. Could you possibly imagine hanging with that shit? No. Like like going out on a date. In the way you have have gone out on dates and hung with girls. And, and, and done that. Could you possibly imagine taking her out it's a nice, and, and getting common ground? It's a nice fantasy, though. It was a good Is description. It? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not talking one, maybe two times. I'm not talking like, you know, going steady. Look, I'm talking it's about a nice fantasy there. <laughs> anything you can talk about while sitting across from each other at a table. I wanted to go yeah. ghetto. I wanted to go ghetto so bad. Yeah. Never that's, got it done. That's such bad jokes. She'd say, right Boo now. got shot, and you'd say, what caliber what weapon? What caliber? Okay, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. You have a wonderful conversation. Perhaps we could go that direction, just talk about you firearms know, all night. we <laughs> got to find the clip. We haven't played it in years. I don't even know if we have it anymore. The Bambulance. The guy oh, with, the Bambulance. We need Bambulance. <laughs> I think what happened was a, a deer. This guy hits a deer, was it? Yeah. And it Went through his windshield. Went through his windshield. No, it was a moose. Was it a moose? Was that, it was a moose where the moose was sitting, and, like the woman hit the oh, moose. Oh no, no, that's another one. Oh, okay, that's a great picture. Yeah, hmm. the moose is uh, his, his ass is sticking out of the windshield. Hmm. But uh, I think it was a deer. He he hits. Oh, he the... hit it and he put it in the back seat. Oh, he oh. okay. That's what it was. He he hits a deer. He decides to pull over and he he figures this is some good eats. Dead deer. Oh, okay. So he puts it in the back seat, and as he's driving down the highway, the deer comes too. A Tommy boy. Yeah, yeah, but but I think it's based life? on a real story because we yeah. used to play the clip oh and God. and the and the nine one one calls this guy going screaming and yelling going I need a baby land I need a baby land I need a baby land he's in the back seat he's alive right if we can find that. ambulance an ambulance for Bambi that's what he now. meant okay <laughs> we got to break with that Otto and George killing with us uh, today Opie and Anthony Run here. Opie and Anthony. Uh, we got Otto from Otto and George in studio. George stays home now. We kind of like that in a way. I thought of bringing him today, but you know, and then again, it would, you know, this guy, this guy goes into a deli and orders a, a ham and Swiss. He goes, I'll have a ham and Swiss on rye, no mustard. And the guy goes, we're out of mustard. Would you like that without mayonnaise? 
<laughs> Jesus. I know George at the Treehouse Comedy Club in Stanford, Connecticut this Saturday. Treehousecomedy.com. And then for and then for all the Long Islanders listening, uh, February 18th, Brokerage in Belmore. You can see Otto and George. That's going to be a good show. Yeah, we got lots to do still, but uh, Jill's on the line from Blairstown, and it says, Ant is so funny. I think it's probably going to be sarcastic. I don't know. Let's find out. Jill? Hi, guys. How are you? Pretty good, Jill. Hi. Um, I just, I've been listening for actually just a couple of months. So. Oh. But... Anthony, you crack me up. Like, you're so ignorant that it's just hysterical. Like, I can't oh, even God. be mad at you. <laughs> he really <laughs> is, right? I knew it. The ignorance is ridiculous. What am, what am I ignorant about, Jill? And he's a very intelligent man. One of, the smartest, one of the smartest guys I know. No, enlighten me. I want to yeah. know what I'm ignorant about. No, you're very smart. And every just this whole everything about races and... Yep. How does it's, just, but, it's so funny. Like, I, I can't even be mad. You just cracked me up. But it's how is... Terrible. Okay, hold on. How is my opinion on what what how the races are and how they act together and things like that, how is that being ignorant? I'm, I'm basing it on something, I, and, and there is a, a kind of a, an opinion on the whole thing. I'm not saying. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely entitled to your own opinion. Right. So I'm, I mean, I'm not. You know, everybody everybody can say whatever they want to say, but it's just. I don't know. It just seems like you get your information off of the most like stereotypical <laughs> movies and like <laughs> websites. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no, no, no. I I also like I look at the I I look at the world. I look at like people. I'm a people watcher. Uh, I I do that. It's not just based on movies. I'm not, I'm not that crazy. But well, were you beat up by a bunch of black guys like Ooh, every day? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I grew up, I went to school in Central Islip at one point in my life out on Long Island, and it's known uh, to not be one of the best neighborhoods around. And I did have some problems with some uh, black gentlemen uh, <sighs> back then taking my money. They, they would always love taking the white kids' money. They come Are you from, really just a sad little boy at heart and you ooh. just need some love? No, why can't it be, <laughs> Jill, why can't it just be that this is the way it is uh, and and I'm just kind of talking about what is while while we were talking about this, let me just let me just enlighten you a little bit. While we're okay. having this conversation, I'm mm -hmm. distracted by the news watching a savage beat the living crap out of an old lady. They're both black. It's black on black crime, uh, mm -hmm. which, which by the way, is ninety percent of the uh, 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 the uh, crimes that black perpetrate are against other black people. Uh, that okay. isn't my opinion, by the way. Uh, that's, I didn't that's, say it was. That's the way it is. Um, why would you say that is? Yeah. Why is there a disproportionate amount of crime in the black community than in the uh, white community or any other uh, ethnic groups? I think that they just. Uh, publicize it more. All right, so you say it's the media. On... No, it's not. It's uh, statistics that are collected by the FBI, by uh, the prisons, that there is a disproportionate number of crimes that are committed by black people uh, right. as opposed that's to the, white that's people. That's the fact because that's what, that's what they do. Yep. Like, But it's a fact that that's the information that they collect. We don't know what goes on in white people's so, houses. There, yeah. So you're saying it's a conspiracy. The clip you, the clip, no. The clip you just yes, played you yeah. of the woman talking about somebody that got shot and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Do you know how many trashy white people I'm not saying that every... And, right. Hey, Jill, and, and Jill Jimmy, I'm going to I'm gonna shoot you. Why? I just... <laughs> Jill, Jill. <laughs> See, here's what, here's, what the, here's what the thing is. I'm not saying there aren't dumb ass white people. As a matter of fact, there are more dumb ass white people than black people because there are more white people in the country. I'm talking 10 or 11 percent of the population of this country account for 50 percent of the prison population. How is that possible without there being a conspiracy, Jill? Just the way they report it, right, Joe? Shut up, Jimmy! <laughs> God, you son of a bitch! <laughs> All I'm saying is. How is that, Jill? 
All I'm saying is I'm not trying to get into all these serious facts. It's just No, funny. you call you, me out on something. I I'm want I want to anything. have I want to have an intelligent You're, debate. You said I'm ignorant on a lot of things. I want to have an intelligent hmm. debate with you on this subject. Why do you think 50% of the prison population is made up of 10% of the country's population? Jill. It's just the way it is. Yep. <laughs> okay, what, well, why is it like that? I need an answer. I say well, I'm not because saying, there's I'm, this. I'm not disagreeing with you. That's uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing with you. So then, I'm why am I stupid? Some of some of the I didn't say you're stupid. Well, why am I then ignorant? Say? I bring these things up. I bring up the crime, and I bring up the the fact that we we don't uh, have common ground because of things like uh, what I just mentioned, and and then I'm called ignorant. Uh, I'm not talking doesn't... about your facts. I'm talking about the plain old mm -hmm. that you you wouldn't be able to fit into a conversation with a bunch of black guys. I couldn't. So I could, why is that funny? Do you because look? Why? Like it's, because it's, it's, I don't understand. Funny. I don't have a common ground with a group of black people. I can't step into that. You certainly can. Unless you're they, talking about the ghetto guys. I am. And that's the hardcore rap. That's guy. what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of why other how black many, guys how many out ghetto there. Ghetto black yeah. guys. Do you run into? Yeah, other really. Right. Yeah. I steer. I steer right. clear. Because um, it's dangerous. Another great point from Jill, right? It's <laughs> dangerous for white people to be around a black criminal element, yeah. as much as it would be for a black gentleman to be around a group of skinheads. Uh. It's dangerous. That's what I'm saying. Ooh, I love getting y'all around. I know. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> yeah, because you're really doing it. Not the b <laughs> bastards that are surrounding me right now agreeing with you. Well, you know, it's, it's, well, it's been a good point raises, Hold on, Jill. You raised a good point about which one? About the Jimmy, there's a lot of them. A lot of times, right, like he just kind of gets his stuff from movies, yeah, right? Yeah. I noticed that, too. Yeah. Shut it, Jimmy. <laughs> before I go, before I go, I just want to say, Jimmy, I love you. Oh, oh thanks, sweetie. Shut up. Totally Jimmy, crazy. that liberal ass. Thank you, He's sweetie. a lib. You liberal Democrat <laughs> jackass you know, Jimmy. What am I That's what we do? call him. We call him liberal <laughs> tree-hugging Jim. Hold on. Pass. I wanna, I'm a Jill hugger. <laughs> Pass along the wealth. Let's spread it around. Jill, what do you look she like? Got it. And he's very witty, and I love him. Thank you, Aww. baby. Is, is that Jill, it? what do you look like, Jill? Jill, how much do you love black Hey, hey, hey. Love it? Do we have to do go just there? Love it? Do we have when to go there? When did your there? father disown you, Jill? Hey, 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 let's keep it fun. Oh, I have a very loving father. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Jill, are you a pretty girl? <laughs> what? Pretty girl, are you? Are you pretty Grady? girl, are you, Mr. Grady? <laughs> <laughs> You uh, chopped liberal Jill up and left her body in the hallway. <laughs> there you go. That's what I like to hear. Nice and dirty. She was talking right. to a cook. Hey, uh, <laughs> right, everybody say hi to my husband, Ben. I'm sure he's listening. <laughs> he's very proud of me right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy. All right. I'm sure he's very proud right now. Go see Jimmy at Caroline's this weekend, Thursday yes. through uh, Sunday, I do believe. <laughs> God, people just can't be honest. Hey, I know. Everyone that says Anne is wrong has never worked. Oh, hold on. I'll, I'll read them all out for I'll, you. Just, yeah. Shane and Philly, just to, just to see what's uh, going on out there. Everyone that says these are, is wrong by the way, has never worked with black people. These are opinions that people have uh, gotten through experience, whether it's right, wrong, right. or different. This is what people are living. Uh, Brennan in San Diego, and is giving facts. She's calling them theories. Uh, Michelle in Rockland County, I understand both sides, but Jill shouldn't attack Ant. Chris in Missouri, smartest black people can also be ghetto. Uh, Tony, black guy from D.C., Ant watches movies and thinks we're all the same. Well, can we have a guy? I think no, a guy I, like Tony and Ant would be uh, it's very interesting. To, sure. I watch He's, movies and think uh, we're all the same. I, I love right, hold on to uh, Jim in, hmm. in Long Beach, I'm a cop. Jill is the ignorant one. Mm -hmm. Scott in D.C., Ant, I think you're ignorant, yep. too, but I love it. And Paulie from the NYPD, I want to back up Ant with facts. Yeah, there you go. Well, Tony from uh, DC. Tony, you're on the open. Hey. Hi, Tony. What's up, Tony? What's go What's going on, fellas? What's up, man? Hey, uh, Ant. Yeah. This, this this guy, Ant. I mean, I love the show. I've been listening for years, but Thank Ant you, just has been going further and further down yeah. the crazy trail. Yeah. The the longer the years have been going on. Track. Look. <laughs> And yeah. nobody, look, I wouldn't fit in to minister society, okay? Yeah. Most black people wouldn't fit in in minister society. Yeah. That is a crazy, uh, ultra-violent movie, you know? Yeah. But to say that that's the same thing as a white uh, black person hanging around skinheads, skinheads kill black people. Yeah. Uh, black people, if you go around black people and you hang around with some black people, they'll just say, what is that guy doing in the hood? 
you know, but they're not going to go up and, and test your balls or anything. You know what I mean? I think yeah. if I if I try walking through East New York on a Saturday night, I am getting effed up, dude. I am getting effed up. If I walk past certain street corners, I'm de- I'm a dead man. I'm done for. It's just the way it is. That is, hey, the- yeah. And most most of the violence, like you said, most of the violence is black people on other black people. Right. Yeah, that's, that's because white people aren't around at that in those well, areas. White people are around, but if you hang around any bad neighbor, if I walked around a trailer park on a Saturday night, I mean, hell, I might get yeah. you know, I might no, get messed up. I you're might right. Get killed. That's my whole so, thing is we're se- we're still a very separatist society because I don't think we can find common ground. What's uh, Tony, give me a brief, like, what is your, your Saturday night like? What do you do on a weekend? On a weekend? I, I sit at home, to be honest. All right. I, I sit at home and Who's I home? Just watch TV. Uh, huh? Oh, man. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, I, oh man, come I'm on. I'm teasing. I like Tony. Come what on. is that? We got an opportunity here. Come He's on. actually uh, making very valid points. What is that? Dude, like, no, I just, I just sit home, to be honest. I, you know, I might go to a bar every now and again, but it's nothing crazy like... We don't stand on the corner and talk about our bitches and you know, <laughs> and, you know all of this stuff. That's just that's that's rap videos, and you can't yeah. you can't take that. And with Ant, another thing is that he's he's corrupting all of you guys. I'm sorry to say it, but <laughs> he does the same thing with the liberal and conservative debate. He, he's just one crazy person <laughs> who says something crazy like Obama's going to pay my mortgage, and then says uh, this is how liberals think. Oh, like they the said the same thing people. about Hitler, yeah. like he was crazy and was going to influence people. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> That's not the same thing. Right, of course <laughs> not. Ant. Come on. And, you see, Ant goes down the crazy trail. All the time. Oh, my God. Oh, da 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 Oh, da 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 There's Ant going down the crazy path. No, I like Tony. That's because I expected, you know, what do you do on the weekend? You hang out. You get drive around in uh, yeah. uh, chopped down Chevys. But how with, do you like uh, Tony? He's with black. some weapons in there and, and just like hassle Tony. the police when they pull you over. That's what I expect. No. All right. Well, but see, we we, we oh. talk back to the police because it, it, they're always around. Yeah. They're always. Around. If you and if when you they're not, the there's a problem. No, if you lived in a neighborhood where the police were always around, always I do. stopping people for no reason. They drive past you know, my they... house all the time. They give me a wave, and then they're off. They're oh, patrol- it's here. called patrolling. <laughs> yeah, but you're paying them. They're like your private security or something like that. <laughs> well, they, they not too far around. off there, Tony. I love the police. What, are you kidding? They're fantastic. Yeah, you, know, you know what happens, though? In, in, in uh, some of the um, uh, communities, uh, uh, the black communities, the the cops can't win because if they're not there, there's people bitching that there's crime and drug uh, 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 sales going on and the cops aren't there to stop it. And then the, when the cops show up and start busting these guys, the, the people come out and go, oh, look what they're doing. They're dragging off you know, our young men. Uh, so it's very hard for the police to uh, win in those situations. It's not hard. Here's, here's the thing. Why don't you just it's treat him with respect when you get pulled over and say, yes, sir, no, sir. I, I, he, well, here's, here's my license, my registration. Well, most most black people feel like they're being treated unfairly anyway when they're pulled over by the police. I, I mean, I get look, pulled over honest, more than the brothers. I swear, yeah, I get pulled over get pulled more than the brothers. But you get pulled over and you get to stay in your car. You know, when, <laughs> when, when we get pulled over, they say, "Get out the car, get on the ground, get on the knee." You know, and it's like face down on the curb. And after you know five or six times of being put on the street face down, then you're like. Maybe you might feel a little, you know, a little chip on your shoulder after a while. But Ant, when you get pulled over, they say, excuse me, sir, can I have you? You were going fast. Could you please give me your license and registration? And you get to sit there with your heat on, and then you say, thank you, officer. With the heat <laughs> on. You're not laying in the street. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is cool being white, I got to say. <laughs> getting, a, getting a cold chin. <laughs> God damn. Uh, I like this uh, Tony guy. Tony, you're all right. Man. I get, you know what it is, though? Why would the cops do that unless there was this disproportionate amount of crime? Are they profiling? No. Perhaps. But if you go out and uh, you're attacked by anything that is the same every time, wouldn't you then be a little more leery uh, in those circumstances? And, Basic but here's human nature. The thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Nixon, uh, uh, I'm going to use a Nixon quote. Nixon said yeah. that because the president does it, that means it's not illegal. Just because the police pull people out of their car and put them on the ground doesn't mean it's a reason for it. 
Hey, mm-hmm. Tony, can I ask you? could just be jerk off. Hey, Tony, can I ask you a question? Agree. Like, you know how you see you, you'll give the cops an attitude sometimes because your experience with cops has been kind of unpleasant, so you kind of will prejudge them when they pull you over. Right. Doesn't it kind of work the other way, too? Like, if a lot of cops uh, work in certain neighborhoods and have had primarily bad experiences with black people, or most of their bad experiences have been with black people, how come it's wrong for them to kind of prejudge? No, it, it's okay, but here's the thing. I would like for white people to at least acknowledge that that may be going on. See, Ant's whole thing is if the police pull you out your car and put you on the ground and, you know, maybe kick you around a little bit, then maybe it's a reason for it. Right. But, mm-hmm. it, but it's never a reason, you know, it's never the other side. Ant never sees the other side. True, it may be some cops who have bad experiences. That's yeah. why they act that way. And it's some black people who had bad experiences. That's why they act that way. But just acknowledge both of them. I, and just say, you know, people get pulled up. What What you want, MF? <laughs> I don't think it's like, I don't think every time they're dragging every black guy out of the car and putting them on the street either. But don't you think that maybe if, if as a community uh, uh, you guys could get together and realize that if you, you clean up, uh, 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 like, you you clean up some of the the crap that's going on in the How? community that the police wouldn't hassle you as much. Where did that come from? I mean, uh, obviously there's there was a, an initial prejudice there, but um, hey, we got black president, so I think if everybody just strives to be law abiding citizens, <laughs> drive nicely, <laughs> and not have drugs and fi- illegal firearms in the vehicles, not roll the window down and have a ton of pot smoke come out. Uh, <laughs> maybe, th- 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 maybe things will change. Again, I love that Snoop Dogg video too. But... <laughs> I got it from a Snoop Dogg video. <laughs> but, but, but see, that's not the thing. It's always going to be people who break the laws, unless we all act like ants. You know, unless we all have our roles to play, we don't question. We just do, you know, what we're supposed to do. But that's never going to happen because. We're people. I hear. I mean, we're we a holes by nature. So yeah. you know, most people don't want to do the right thing when when they're supposed to be doing it. You know. Yeah. But we, we got we got to go to break, Tony. But uh, definitely. Yeah, thank you guys, though. Great uh, talking to you. I, I like I, I like uh, the points you made. Yeah, Tony, very, call back anytime. Good. You were very, real good, right, man. Thank very you guys. cool, Thanks, Tony man. in DC. Uh, we got to take a quick break. We'll do a little mopping up in just a bit. Stay there, right. Opie and Anthony. We got to get out of here. They're ready to start the music marathon here in New York City. And we're going to go over to Sirius XM and do some cursing, check our mouse traps, and spend more time with Otto from Otto and George. Yep. Uh, this Saturday, Otto, Treehouse Comedy Club, Stanford, Connecticut. Another fine appearance today by you, by yourself. Thank you. Yes, very good. And then the brokerage, February 18th, for everybody out there on Long Island. Anything else? We have Caroline this tonight. No, tomorrow. It's Sunday. Yeah. Hmm. Two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Um, I'll be there. And my whole new thing that I've been doing, we really physical comedy. Where I've been <laughs> kind of doing this improv thing where I bring people on stage and we act out a scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really fun. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. I'm like, hold. What's the occupation? Someone will yell like job. Uh, abortion doctor. All right, please. Oh. All right, you're an abortion doctor. Yeah. At a deli. Go. Yes. <laughs> that looks like. I'll have a slice of what looks like my left job. <laughs> yeah, so he's pimento. <laughs> <laughs> Want to thank yeah, Sam. He's gently sucking the pimentos out of the olives. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say oh, God. olive loaf. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> no, the pimento is good. That, that works. works. Yeah. I, I tripped into a good one. <laughs> and Sam, of course, for bringing in the greatest treats of all time. Or ah, some yes. of the some greatest of. treats of all time. Sam's dad, got to thank him. Yeah, pictures are up on onaradio.com. And uh, we're working on the videos. They'll be around tomorrow, I yeah. assume. A lot of puking. E-Rock just couldn't handle some of the greatest <laughs> treats of all time. Uh, because we uh, mentioned it, we leave you today, just before the music marathon, with the I Need a Bambi Lance phone call. Right. We'll see you tomorrow. Family. This is the ambulance emergency line. Do you have an emergency? I need a ambulance. Who is this? A Joe. Okay. Oh, where do you need us? I'm in my phone booth. Okay. What's the address there? Hold on. Okay, sir. Did you call through 911? Uh, no. Okay, Joe. I need a location. What street are you on? Uh, I'm in my phone booth at the stop and go. Yeah, I'm at the. That's it. I'm at the stop and go. Well, I'm in the phone booth. Let me tell you what, I'm, in, I'm going down to my 
from Otto and George has made the walk. Yeah. Some of you guys, you don't make the walk. We like when we uh, see you make the walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Otto continues with us. Mm-hmm. All right. Got a nice audience uh, filing in. Ooh. Onto the bleachers. And uh, mousetrap still nothing, huh? Wow, well, that's... Fuck, you think there were no mice around here? That's becoming a bust. We know that the place is infested. Mm-hmm. With rodents. I think they got the exterminator coming in tomorrow, too. So bit, oh, game bit, over. Bit is going to be over tomorrow. Flaggers. Fucking wankers. There's a couple mm. things we couldn't get to because uh, we were we had a lot of action. It went uh, fast over there today. A lot of action. That. Yes. That's the sign of a good, solid program. I know Jimmy likes a good comic strip. They're fucking so funny, man. You, you enjoy a good comic strip. Yeah, I do. They're and there's really... something going on with Dilbert that's making uh, a lot of news today there, oh, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. what? I miss you reading the comics, by the way. It's been a while. Nah, that's too funny. I all laughed out. Sure. Mm. Uh, do you want me to tell you what happened to Dilbert, or should we play the audio and have the big surprise? Let's play it, because Dilbert, yeah. Dilbert always gets me. He always catches me off guard. Dilbert is what? Is he, oh, in, is he like an office space It's not type? office humor. Office humor? <laughs> it's office humor, cubicle humor, uh... uh Bosses and sub bosses and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, all that kind of crap. Yeah. Secretaries, paperwork, Ch- cubicle, TPS crap. reports, <laughs> PC load letter, <laughs> PC load letter. I don't really wonder what the fuck that means. <laughs> I gotta watch PC office space. load letter. <laughs> that was the one. I never was freaking out over it. What the fuck? I never got office space, and everyone's like, you're, you're, "You gotta watch it for a couple you times." Watch yeah, so I'm gonna give it another try. But yeah. Dilbert is in the news and his comic strip. Listen to this. And in a sure sign of the times, cartoon character Dilbert has been fired. A se- Dilbert has been fired, what? Jimmy. What? What did Dilbert do again? Oh, I think no. it's because of the economy. You know, you got to be relevant with oh. your comic strip, right? This has got people are talking. A symbol of the downtrodden worker, Dilbert says, my side business DilbertFiles.com is getting a lot of attention. I have a feeling I will soon be leaving my cubicle behind. All in favor of firing this idiot for using company resources? <laughs> what? I don't even know what we just heard. What was that? It what just the fuck does that mean? Off, but yeah, no, it, it, no there's, it's in parts, but... Did Dilbert get fired? The card, they, they, did he stop writing that shitty comic strip? <laughs> yeah, Sam, what happened? Sam, did the guy get fired? Sam, you're making everyone angry today. What no the one fuck is going on with Dilbert and his stupid comic strip? What the fuck? Well, you guys are probably just like... Because it's very funny. you got to listen to it again. <laughs> what they did was they read, they read the Dilbert Gets Fired comic strip, and the last box of the three panels, the last panel is the is his boss's saying should we fire him and so that's where i ended the clip so that way you guys could laugh and not oh 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 and then we're gonna find out right and then there's some more audio after that but i wanted to end the clip there so you guys had a minute to laugh but what is to <laughs> laugh <laughs> okay thanks for putting a little break in there You're so welcome. we can laugh yeah, yeah. But wait dilbert appreciate that they, they, they might fire the guy the character who gives a fuck not the guy that writes <laughs> no no the no the thing. character dilbert is getting fired so now we're going to have to follow his adventures of trying or, to get a job. Or misadventures. Misadventures. <laughs> of trying to get a job. Fucking <laughs> sad, man. What you does he do tool. now? Well, he's he's going to be sucking cock <laughs> down in the meatpacking yeah. district. How about Dagwood gets arrested for rape? <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Blondie goes to defend him? That would be a great fucking <laughs> yes. strip. Yes. So, Peppermint Patty is caught eating pussy. <laughs> <laughs> she's fucking eating Lucy's ass in the doghouse. 
<laughs> That'd be a great little twist in a comic strip. Oh, uh, wouldn't it? Yeah. Love to see that. Where Marmaduke jumps into the family circus and oh. fucks the kid's face. <laughs> you get chlamydia from pig pen. <laughs> Doesn't wash his cock. <laughs> He's unclipped. <laughs> One of them like a Pollock. So let's take Sam's <laughs> advice and let's replay this. Yes. Yeah. Let's see where this and is going. Because he gives us time to laugh. All, All right. right. Now right. we got the setup. Now this might make sense. And a sure sign of the times. Cartoon character Dilbert has been fired. A symbol of the downtrodden worker. Dilbert says, my side business, DilbertFiles.com, is getting lots of attention. I have a feeling I will soon be leaving my cubicle behind. All in favor of firing this idiot for using company resources? Oh, so that was the panel with the so bosses? He's sitting there. So Dilbert's sitting there going, well, I've created this side business while I'm at work that's going to enable me to leave my job and, you know, become a successful millionaire on my own. Right. Little does Dilbert know that in his head he's saying, I'm going to be out of here soon, but he's going to be out a little sooner than he thinks. <laughs> oh, 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 Sam. Oh, wow, Sam. The way you put it. Right. Well, all right. Scott Adams is the man, the cartoonist, and the blogger behind the character. Scott, why did you pick this moment in time for Dilbert to lose his job. And Gee, like, boy, I wonder. I wonder why. Maybe because everyone's losing Holy a job, and, shit. and and he wants he wants to have Dilbert relate to the people, man. man. So, fuck. It's the smart move. Tessio was always smarter. Yeah. Dilbert was always smarter. <laughs> Dilbert, Ugh. pick you up in front of Dilbert's joint in an hour. <laughs> this moment in time for Dilbert to lose his job, and quite frankly, oh. he was using company resources. It's a terrible thing to lose a job, but didn't he deserve to get fired? Well, you know, his company was slowing down, just like everybody else's company is uh, slowing down, and he didn't have much to do, so he started a side business in his cubicle, that guy sounds which like is, Napoleon you know, what a lot of people do, including <laughs> myself. He does. He does sound like Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Dilbert should get it in the head, like the Turk. Why don't you just drop me on the way after, or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> in business in his cubicle, which is, you know, what a lot of people did, including myself. And uh, wow. he got caught. So it just seemed like a good time to uh, downsize him and let him see what it's like to try to get a Vote for job Pedro. in this economy. Is, God, what a bore. Oh, oh, you know. That's see loose. how it's like to get a job yes. in this economy. I mean, I'm with Sam here. This is a, yeah. this is so a treat for is everyone. Is he going to just, like, be looking for a job? Or is yeah. he going to take a little time off and hang around the house? Well, for a little while, you know, what do we see? A lot of people are asking that question. <laughs> are they, Sam? And in this <laughs> next track, oh, we find out. Wow, okay. Does your dad enjoy a good comic strip when he's eating some of the greatest treats of all time? Hmm. I don't know. He does have the Sunday paper by his side while he's eating these oh, treats. Yeah. I bet he likes Beetle Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of those old comics that have been around for a thousand Brenda years. Star. <laughs> Brenda Star. Brenda Star still hot <laughs> in comic strip form. Is he going to get brought back really fast, or are you going to have a long-running storyline where he's now looking for a job and, and get a lot My of question. humor out of that? Well, I will tell you that, you know, I can't give away too much. Oh. I will tell you that uh, when he comes back, it won't be in the same capacity. So you got I can't oh, wait to see it. motherfucker. Wow. Now i I got to start reading the we're, Dilbert We're going to uh, learn three comics. panels at a time. For the next five years, <laughs> yeah. we'll chronicle his fucking his two job searches. Oh, Three effing panels at a time. Oh, fucking oh my boring. God. When they stop with fucking comic strips, no one laughs when they read them. It is nobody. An archaic form of entertainment. Jimmy, nobody was, laughs. It was relevant in, in the the twenties. Get us a newspaper. What are you talking about, Jimmy? They hurt my throat. I, is that um, <laughs> today? <laughs> now is that in today's paper, Dilbert, getting fired, or is that maybe? Oh, I happened know. already, and now we can get an update by reading today's paper, oh, Sam. That's a very Sam? good question. I, I, I think, I think, Sam, you should be on top of the whole Dilbert thing and bring us updates from time yes. to time. Yes, I will give you Dilbert updates. Where you will we be our today? Dilbert connection. Has he been fired? Dilbert has been fired. Officially, he's, he's, he's been fired. Okay. Dilbert's jobless. So the next, I mean, the oh. listeners are going to be begging yeah. for the. Oh. They're going to be begging for the Dilbert updates. Uh, they're saying yeah. so. Make, oh. make sure you don't disappoint our fine listeners. Maybe he'll shoot himself and his family. <laughs> we, <laughs> be great, wouldn't it? we don't have a Dilbert today, but we what? have Beetle Bailey today. Fuck Beetle Bailey. Oh, what, Doonesbury? The New York Papers don't have Dilbert. is probably the funniest uh, comic ever. Yeah. yeah. You can read it, and then you just don't understand it. We don't even have Dilbert in our papers after all what that. What a waste of a page of newsprint. <laughs> these are, these are the good. comics. This gets you angry. 
Man, look at Jimmy. He's reading the funny papers. <laughs> <laughs> funny papers. Fucking Don Corleone. You dummy. <laughs> He's being sprayed with DDT by his little fucking grandson. Here's the uh, Beetle Bailey. Sonny should have whacked him. <laughs> oh, we got a little Beetle Bailey today. This is only a two-paneler, on Two panels? Oh, boy. What is that? One of, the, one of the guys is sitting there, the two guys, the old general. I hope and... this ends like the first uh, part of Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> Beetle Bailey sitting on the toilet, his brain splattered on the wall. <laughs> and there's another guy talking to the old guy, and he goes, uh, Ever think about retiring, Amos? And Amos goes, oh, yeah, I guess when this job stops being fun, I'll leave. And the two secretaries over here, and the one is, like, incredulous, and she's, like, looking over her shoulder, and she goes, fun? And the other secretary goes, when you quit, he quits. So I guess what happens is the the older general probably likes the young secretary. And uh, when fun. it won't be fun once she quits. Oh, well, oh. that's a thinking man's comic. God. Sam enjoyed Holy it. Holy shit. Uh, what, what is this, bad. the new Dilbert? Yeah. Oh, yes. Christ on oh a my pony. God. What, Hand me what that one. What took you so long? Dilbert got fired January 21st. Mm. Sam sucks. This is old, boring news. This is not old, boring news, because we're still following the case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we haven't covered it yet, so now it's news. This fucking Dilbert. What, what is Dilbert? Looks like a cigar person. Why is he <laughs> yeah. naked? Doesn't Dilbert usually have a tie that like kind of goes not, up at the bottom? He's not working he's anymore. Not working anymore. Oh, why would why you wear is, a tie if you weren't working? Is he being interviewed hmm. by a dog? That's Dogbert. Yeah, that's Dogbert. Dog I don't know what the fuck Dogbert <laughs> is. Is it Dogbert? Yeah, it's Dilbert and Dogbert. Oh, hmm. See, and Dogbert likes. Dogbert likes peanut butter rubbed on genitals. Yeah, <laughs> on, on pussy Bert. <laughs> on Dilbert's asshole. <laughs> so, yeah. Dilbert Dilbert puts a pink lipstick Bert in, in Dilbert's mouth Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dilbert is horrendous. And just if you want to set up, I'm reading uh, yesterday's Dilbert. All right, yeah. And so he's oh. interviewing with Dogbert, and uh, Dogbert <laughs> tells him that uh, they're going to put him through some rigorous uh, tests for his interview process and then it turns into like uh, kind of like a, a water torture situation where Dilbert takes his clothes off and they've hung him upside down and they're dunking his head into water. Oh, okay. So now this is the continuation which is ex explains why Dilbert is is without clothes. Is uh, nude, semi nude. Yeah. Sexy Dilbert. How do we explain hmm. this? Uh, who wants to take this one? Well, Dogbert's at the uh, desk, and, and cigar person's just standing there. <laughs> Apparently, Dogbert is playing the part of the person that Dilbert will have to interview with when he does go out on the job. He is now just training, I guess. Oh, this is fake interviewing. Fake interviewing with Dogbert. Oh, well, you gotta, you know, be ready at to his back, house. Right. back into it. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Sure. All right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, right. Dogbert says, uh, "You survived the rigorous interview process, but there are no openings in engineering." Mm-hmm. And then the next panel, panel one, mm -hmm. and panel two. Look how lazy is that drawing? The second panel is of the top part of a building. Anyone could draw that. Oh, is that what that was? That's the only oh. thing I could draw. I couldn't even tell yeah. what that the fuck it was. I thought it was, it was a, thought box. It was a box. Yeah, at first, I thought they were inside a box, and then I thought it was no, the, it's like just, an uh, air it's conditioning the top two duct. floors of a building, uh, and I, that's the whole panel. Jesus. And I thought it was, uh, then finally I settled on that it was uh, the other side of a cubicle. That that they were then like kind ah, of just looking, yes. oh, no. but no, it's the top of a building. Very good, Opie. Oh an, wow, that's it's really an establishing good. shot. It's <laughs> a yeah. comic strip. You can't get a little more artistic. What a lazy fuck. It's it's like a lot of newspapers. Hard. And more by than the just way, dumb building. All he did was duplicate the first and third panel. Also, there's no <laughs> changes. Yeah. Right. So he fucking completely lazed out on this one. Fuck. Yeah, but it's in the writing. Is Shut it? It. Yeah, the writing is good though. <laughs> All right, so you got the top two floors of a building, and I mean that is it, and it's a lame-looking building. It looks like a cubicle, like these guys were saying, or a yeah. box. All right, go ahead. And uh, Dogbert, I guess, says. <laughs> Dogbert says. You don't know because you don't see the characters, because you know. <laughs> yeah. He's lazy. Why would you? Yeah. Dogbert says. However, I am prepared to offer you a position in sales. And uh, Cigar Body says. <laughs> <laughs> You mean a job? And now I go to panel three. And that's all they wanted to give us in panel number two. Because you got to find out what's in panel three. <laughs> panel three is exactly the same as panel one, but with funnier banter. Uh, it's the exact same drawing, with just different words. Yeah. 
This lazy fuck. Who is uh, the Dilbert guy? <laughs> I don't know. They said his name on the clip. Yes. Yeah. Well, I ain't replaying that horse. Scott shit. Adams. Yeah. Scott Adams sucks. Even his name is boring. Yeah. Fuck him and Scott Fuck Bert. So then Dogbert says, uh, "No, he says you mean a job." And then Dogbert goes, "No, just a position." <laughs> and then um, Cigar Body says, <laughs> "This took an ugly turn. <laughs> <laughs> this cannot be." And that's it. In that's papers. Funny. Yeah. This that... cannot be in newspapers. Who? There's a website dedicated to this. Wow. Yeah, that's it. Who it would laugh weak. at that? Nobody would laugh at that. Nobody no would one. laugh at that. It's not funny. It's not even this. <laughs> it's not even that. <laughs> not even a... <laughs> it's, it's just shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to... I mean... That's but... for jacking off. Cigar body. Cigar body. Yes. <laughs> jacking off. This is Warren Jerome <laughs> <laughs> But in a way, it does kind of lead you to want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, if he's standing in front of Dogbert tomorrow, I'm <laughs> fucking burning uh, the paper. Burn the whole building. Wow. Burn the paper, burn the paper. Yes, Danny. On uh, Dilbert.com, uh, there oh. is... <laughs> is there a, like a preview, a trailer for tomorrow's fucking panel? Well, no, but there is There is a fun game. It's called Are You Funnier Than Scott Adams? And uh, it basically gives it. you <laughs> it gives you the last panel blank. So that you can. Oh boy! Oh, oh boy. well, All I think right. we should have a little contest. So, if you'd like, I could print out some copies. I'd like it a lot. Can, can we, we do that? And we could play a little game. Let's well, play a little play game. Can the, listeners, fun, can the listeners play a line and, and they add? sure can. <laughs> <laughs> they can go to Dilbert.com, <laughs> and uh, there's a link right on the homepage to uh, Are You Funnier Than Scott Adams? How about you pass out a bunch of them to our studio audience also? Ooh, oh, and yes. they, Let's play. And Are you funnier than can. Scott Adams? Yeah. Scott, Ooh, Adams. Scott Peterson is funnier than <laughs> Scott Adams. <laughs> so, <laughs> is. so is Connor. <laughs> you go to Dilbert.com. Lacey Burt wasn't. <laughs> Lacey <laughs> Burt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, she came up like sushi. <laughs> all wrapped in seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll have the young child. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 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 oh God! Damn. Oh, oh, that's very oh. funny. This little, little wasabi head. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah. What kind of a job do you guys think he'll end up being able to get? Oh, no, uh, no. Sam. Let's see. Um, you can only imagine. Sam. A funny bone remover. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to play uh, Are You Funnier Than Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, the writer, the blogger. He blogs about it. Of course he does. Bloggers wow. are always very funny. <clears throat> They're very funny people. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. How long has Dilbert been around? Forever. Yeah, it seems like forever. It certainly it's does. one of the newer cartoons, but it's got to be around since the early oh. 90s. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it was actually, it got to the point where I think Dilbert actually had a, a short-lived uh, animated series. Oh! Yeah. Where? I don't remember the original network, but I think Comedy Central uh, syndicated it UPN? for a while. UPN? Hmm. Oh, I was trying to knock that off. You did pretty good. I know, of course. Danny, what's this clip? Some uh, repo clip that's supposed to be pretty good. Calling a bank. What do we got here? As we uh, make copies of the Dilbert uh, panel. The audience now has it, and they're going to attempt to ah, be funnier be than... Funnier than Douchebag Adams, or whatever his name is. Adam Scott Adams. Uh, we Not Rich... What is yeah. this about? Uh, well, huh. I, this is I, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> we not rich. Okay. Yeah, well, this is really, it's, you know, it's something quick. It's something for Ant, really. Um, <laughs> Thank of course you. it is. <laughs> ah, you really just have to play it, I think. I mean, you're gonna, you, you'll listen to this voicemail that was left for a, uh, a banker. Okay. Somebody had left. Somebody had called to try and repossess a vehicle for lack of payment. Yeah, that'll happen. It will. And this was the message that was left back to the bank. And it kind of goes on for a while, and you go, okay. And then there's a nice little punch at the end that makes sense for everybody. All righty. Uh, yes. Um, Y'all come to get the car. The car is not here. The car is in the shop, and one part is at another shop. If y'all want it that bad, y'all can go pay that man to get it out and then pay the person to get the other part out. I mean, because y'all act like y'all couldn't be patient. You knew that we was going to get it taken care of. So if y'all want it that bad, y'all can go get it. You pay the man and pay the other man, and 
we can leave it as that. Because we're not on that much on the card. Y'all want to trip on it now that we only got on a thousand or two thousand on it. So you know what? God bless y'all. Y'all can go pick up the car. So you know what? Give me a call back and I will give you the direction to where the man is. And I will let him know that y'all going to be paying him to get it out because y'all don't be patient. We're not rich like y'all. That's one thing y'all going to have to understand. But one day this year, we will be because we have Barack Obama. You cunt. <laughs> you fucking oh, cunt. Wow. <laughs> Ugh. See, I just felt bad for her. Shut it. <laughs> I did. She said like, they took a car. First of all, this <laughs> dumb fucking goon doesn't even understand. The repo guy can go to the fucking garage or wherever the fuck this car is that she says is being serviced in two different places. Where did she cut it in half? <laughs> and, and take it and repo the fucking thing. And the bill is still going to your stupid ass. What a dummy. Obama president, nah. Uh, but I'm not rich like y'all, but I will be. No, you're not. Mm. No, you're not. Barack you're going to take Gant's money? Yeah, well, she got her car taken away. You Good. heard. She's going she's gonna to be rich. Ugh. Like all of us. And my fucking taxes go up because this cunt has to fucking get more money because I got to help. Because I got to help bring people up behind me. <laughs> this is the shit I'm talking about, by the way. When people call me delusional and stupid and ignorant and fucking, I only get my shit from movies and stuff. No, that's reality. That's fucking reality. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're fucking dealing with. Ignorant motherfuckers like that who think they're going to fucking get rich off of uh, uh, people that are working for a living. Yeah, there's, asses. A, there's a few out Good. there. Good. Get but... your car repoed, you cunt. There's <laughs> just a few out there. It's not, a, it's not an epidemic. Leave a few of your anything. kids in there, too, while you're at it. <laughs> oh, so I don't have to pay for them. <laughs> oh, what a twat. God, is that annoying. Oh, that clip is annoying. Fucker. Oh, good. That's going to make this Dilbert fucking panel real easy. Mm. All right. We got the uh, Dilbert thing. At least there's one word I know how to spell by heart. Now, the comic strip <laughs> we just did for you, uh, you could, like, do the third panel yourself. That's where we're at. So we got the oh. you survived the rigorous interview process, but there are no openings in engineering. Second panel with the building. However, I'm prepared to offer you a position in sales. Uh, cigar body says you mean a job. <laughs> and now we got Thank the you. third panel. As we play, are you funnier than Scott Adams, the creator and writer and blogger of Dilbert? And you can play along at home at what? Dilbert.com? All right. First entry. First entry is from uh, Otto's friend. Otto, you didn't introduce your friend. Well, um, oh, that's Roger Sullivan over there. Roger Sullivan. Yeah. From Hohokus. Hohokus? Yeah. What the hell's Hohokus? It's north of Paramus. I didn't know. Uh, of a town called Hohokus. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Danny, you want to read this? You take the entries. Sure. Are you funnier than Scott Adams? Scott Adams. So, should I recap the whole panel again? For I, did, everybody? I did, but yeah, do it mm -hmm. one more time. Right. What the hell? So, the first panel, Dogbert says to Dilbert, you survived the rigorous interview process, but there are no openings in engineering. However, I am prepared to offer you a position in sales. Dilbert replies, you mean a job? And uh, in this, our first entry uh, in the Dilbert uh, game here, uh, Dogbert says no. And Dilbert says, well, I guess I could deal pot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, what is he saying over there? What? You're hoping for a little something more than that? Oh, uh, wow. Well. Why would the mic be on? Why? <laughs> Why would it be on? <laughs> I'm so glad the listeners get to see it for themselves because they a lot of people think it's just a bit we do. And no, it's no bit. It's 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 reality. All right, we'll try again. These in? Yeah. yeah. I just thought it would be funny if Gilbert hit hard times and became like a total de degenerate. You know. Oh, that I, would be funny. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know about that. That's just that's encouraging. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> hey, anyone else have entries out there on the bleachers? Jimmy's handing in his. Anthony handed in his. Mine, mine can't be read on the air. <laughs> no, mine can't be read on the air. Maybe no. with the maybe with the button. <laughs> maybe with the button. Maybe with the Sam, button. Sam, you got an entry from the listeners? Yeah. All right. What is uh, his uh, third panel? This young man's.
panel Ooh. says, sort of, huh. you'll be head bowl prepper. And then Gilbert says, in that case, I'll go back to Ted's filament factory. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, all right. <laughs> um, nice. Okay, here's one. Let me, uh, let me read this. Uh, this is just from somebody, yeah. Anthony? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. However, I'm Jesus. prepared to offer you a position in sales. Yeah. And then uh, Dilbert says, you mean a job? And Dogbert says, no, Obama president, nah. We're giving your job to a... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, hold on. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> here he goes. <laughs> he got it, he got it, he's cracking up. That's the kind of laughs we have here. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, boy, look at everybody out there uh, just hmm. really thinking and what's the matter? You got nothing, don't you? Look at you, nothing. Here you go. Danny, uh, try that one. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> uh oh, that's never good. Okay. All right. So, however, I am prepared to offer you a position in sales, and Dilbert says you mean a job, and Dogbert says yes, you can do Opie and Anthony's job once I catch them fired. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Oh boy. Any others? We have one from intern Paul. Intern Paul? Uh, Alright, Sam, take it away. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, says, boy. However, I am prepared to offer you a position in sales. And then Dilbert says, you mean a job? And then in the third box, Paul just wrote the word no. <laughs> <laughs> Why have... is that funny? <laughs> it says something funny about it. Well, you know what? Because I, I was still laughing. <laughs> like, it's just, it's a shitty, it's a shitty setup for a joke because, yeah. like, if Dogbert's going to offer him a position in sales, why would Dilbert reply, you mean it? Like, yes, a job. Yeah, yes, you idiot. <laughs> That's my entry. Dogbert says, yes, a position in sales. <laughs> Dilbert says, thanks. <laughs> it's just as good as what this <laughs> asshole is writing. Exactly. And getting in papers. <laughs> uh, you, you got another one there, Sam? Yeah, uh, this is from Tom out here. All right, one of the listeners. Who uh, I am prepared to offer you a position in sales. And then Dilbert says, you mean a job, and then Dogbert doesn't say anything, and then Dilbert says, sales, what other kind of jobs we got? <laughs> I guess in reference to the... Yeah, the beer club. Right, right. 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 What is that? What, <laughs> what is that? That's someone's what is that? fucking phone. Are you a that is, follower? That's our copy machine making more Dilbert. Oh, Dilbert. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, can, can the intern that's holding that wireless mic... <laughs> Pointed away from the copy machine. Put right down on the copy <laughs> machine. <laughs> okay, we have another one. Yeah. From uh, Kevin. He says, you mean a job? And then Dogbert says, yeah, selling I Hate Your Guts by Jim Norton. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think it's uh. more of a plug than <laughs> And then uh, one from Heather. Uh, you mean a job? And then Dogbert says, Based on your choice of clothing, you've already lost all sense of self-respect. I think sales is perfect. Now blow me. <laughs> Which is more... Uh, the now longer. blow me kicker, I like. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's a good one. Chokers. We got another one not yeah. being handed in. Thank we got God. another one. Um, you mean a job? No. You are going on welfare and taking ants money. Oh, that's, oh see, boy. I don't like that. I don't find it funny. <laughs> Does he have those blank ones? Yeah, they're coming. Oh, we got more blank ones being passed out. Good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Give me a couple. <laughs> Give me a couple. <laughs> hey, keep, it, keep in mind, folks, this is only today's. We could we could do yesterday's. Oh, we could do last day's. Wow. Let's just focus on this one. Are you one. sure? Oh, thank Let's you. Let's just focus on this one. Yeah. Can't wait to read what the listeners come up oh with God. online. Look at this. My half of my Adam's panel is cut off. Happy. I think I'll make it. All right. Intern Paul wasn't happy with his first entry. And ah. He has another entry. Okay. He says, you mean a job? And then Dogbert says... Only if you fuck me. And then Gilbert says, I'll get the oven mitts. <laughs> he's a dog. Oh, that's good. And the oven mitts. But 
<laughs> yes, but that would be the dog <laughs> fucking Dilbert. No. Huh? Dilbert fucks the dog. Yeah, but no, the oven mitts are for the dog fucking Dilbert in the ass because the oven mitts keep the claws from digging into Dilbert's sides. No, no, <laughs> the dog wants to get fucked. But then the oven mitts don't make sense. No, you don't understand. No, I understand. You don't seem to. Dilbert yeah. is fucking the dog. So what are the oven mitts for? To fuck the dog with? No. no. Everyone knows the dog fucks the human. You duct tape the oven mitts on the dog's front paws right. because when he mounts right. you to fuck you, he his, his dew claw will dig into your sides and leave scratches on your ribs. <laughs> yeah, a really good one. <laughs> From executive intern David. Oh, all well, right. Wait, let David read it. David's himself. got to do it in his inimitable delivery. Ladies and delivery. gentlemen, executive intern David making David, his way into the studio. Finally. Have you met this guy yet, Otto? Yeah, at the other building. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He was drinking the... Okay. Yeah. Uh, intern David. Executive intern David. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is... I'll read it. Uh, Dogbert says... You survived the rigorous interview process. Oh, yes. There are no the whole, the whole engineering. Then he says, however, I am prepared to offer you a position in sales. And Dolbert says, you mean a job? And Dolbert says, yes, you will actually have to do work. And Dolbert says, oh, man. <laughs> that's like work. You could, you could write for Dilbert, though. <laughs> yes. That, 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 would, that yeah. would probably appear in the paper. That's yeah. a good one. Oh, Thank you. Foo. Here you go. Foo. Oh, thanks, Uncle Paul. Uh, Uncle Paul is handing one. Uncle Paul making an appearance. Yes. <laughs> Read Uncle Paul's name, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I don't really think that uh, it's Dogbert and Dilbert having a conversation. It just kind of seems like a question that Uncle Paul was kind of wondering. <laughs> All right. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Thank you, Ken. Cartoons is fun. It just says... <laughs> you have to read the cartoon. Okay, let me read the cartoon. Uh, so we know what the first panel is, and then... Uh, uh, Dogbert says, however, I'm prepared to offer you a position in sales, and Dilbert asks, you mean a job? And I'm not quite sure who's saying this. It's just kind of in the panel, in bad handwriting. It just says, you got any kids I can fuck? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and can is spelled K-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> I like cartoons. <laughs> oh, and uncle, uncle is also spelled with a K. <laughs> I like cars for kids. <laughs> Sam, we got a couple more. Yeah. Heather has a follow-up. You may remember Heather. She's the one who wrote, based on your choice of clothing, you've lost all self-respect. Yeah. I think sales is perfect. Yeah. Now blow me. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. trying it again. The follow up. Okay. He says, You mean a job? And then the dog says, I said blow me. <laughs> it's kind of a follow up. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. kind of a, a sequel almost. A, a then we've got Dilbert 1.5. We've got one from Kevin who Dilbert says, You mean a job? And then Dogbert says, more like begging, you're selling Voss tickets. Oh, oh see, wow. Rich isn't oh, even here to see. defend himself. <laughs> <out of there. laughs> wow, that's so not, yeah. not right. You got another one there, Sam? Yes, this is a good one because it's political. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Dilbert says, you mean a job? And then uh, Dogbert says, yeah, a job. Wait, Bloomberg just cut that one, too. There you go. Mm -hmm. oh, I get it. Because that's the oh, way no. he's running the city. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have another entry. <laughs> yes. So, again, uh, Dogbert, however, I'm prepared to offer you a position in sales. Dilbert asks, you mean a job? And uh, Dogbert replies, yes, you can clean cum out of my handlebar mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Wow. That was a nice little callback. Wow. <laughs> oh, shit. Sam, back to you. We've got one from Keith. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Dilbert says, you mean a job? And then Dogbert says, yes, but you'll be selling Gap the movie. 
Oh. And then Dilbert says, I would rather drive my wife to suicide. Oh, is, wow. <laughs> that kind of happened. A little Paul O. bashing <laughs> going on there. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Funny. And then our intern, Charlie, did one. All right. And then Dogbert says, <laughs> I mean, Dilbert says, you mean a job? And then Dogbert says, no, a position in sales, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the blow me approach. Yeah, yeah, just something dirty. It'll always make you chuckle. Yeah. yeah. Are we about done there, Sam? I think we have Heather going for a third uh, home. Uh, wow. Oh, oh, cool. God bless her. She should just apply for the fucking job. Heather, what's the plug again? <laughs> Why not? I got one. What you is? got what? A George plug? Gallo and Terry McNeely at Ollie's Point on Sunday. Uh, February 8th. What, what are Sunday. they? Comedians? George is a comedian, yeah. He's comedians, fine. Okay, yeah. good, very good. There, I knew you'd have a plug. Hmm. All okay. Right. This is Heather's third entry. Yep, this is a good one. Dilbert says, you mean a job? And then Dogbert says, stop staring at me. Wow. Because he's just looking at him. You know. I'm getting a report that uh, <laughs> they won't allow curses online. They effing bleep them out on you, so you got to work around that. If you're yes. trying to do this online at Dilbert.com. Intern Scott has one, which I don't know why he's taking shots at people in this one, but uh, Dilbert says, you mean a job? And Dogbert says, yes. Now go sell Opie a new fucking car. Oh, oh they, they're, they're tying it into the show. Yeah, I'm, now. Work, I'm working on that car thing. Hope that's okay with you, Scott. He's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer him. All right. <laughs> and the fart ends the segment, I do mm, believe. Yeah, yeah there's good one. Exclamation point. We should take an eat, eat see break. An eat see break. I got an eat see. An eat see break. Otto from Otto and George in studio playing the Treehouse Comedy Club, Stanford, Connecticut on Saturday. Saturday, yes, sir. And then the brokerage out there on Long Island on February 18th. Mm -hmm. More with Otto from Otto and George in just a bit. Oh, yeah, I, want, I would love to hear Oh, you want to hear the Bill Hicks stuff? Yes. Oh, oh that would be nice. Lead up, definitely. Uh, Otto, Otto, you're a fan of Bill Hicks, right? Yeah, absolutely. One of your guys uh, knows Bill Hicks. Yeah. A lot of people know Bill Hicks. I never got to see him live. He's one of my favorites of all time. I got to meet him. At, um, That's huge. Governors. Down in Levittown, Adam mm -hmm. Ferraro was uh, opening up for him. Right. And went back in the dressing room, and there was uh, Adam and Bill Hicks. That's cool. Took his hand. Felt privileged because I was a big fan at the time. You were? Yeah. Fuck yeah. More people are becoming fans after his death. Yeah. It's so weird when you listen to his stuff. A lot of it can be said today. It's kind of timeless. Some of the references are a little off, but besides that, the material if you just, is right there. If you just put in different names... Yeah. Of things, yeah, yeah, you could use the material. Well, he now. beat the shit out of Bush, so you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you play that stuff. It sounds like he's talking about the. Well, I was going to say the current president, the president that we just uh, hmm. said goodbye to. I'd love to have heard his take on our current president. I'm sure he would have liked him. Yeah, but, uh, he I'm sure supportive. it would have been very funny. Um, <laughs> you should go to Bill. Uh, you should go to YouTube. Uh, Letterman. I thought this would get a lot more attention. What's than it did. the YouTube? The the internet. <laughs> what is the YouTubes? The YouTubes. Because I hear a lot about it. Um, what happened was, on Friday, Letterman had Bill Hicks's mom on to discuss the banning of a set that Bill Hicks did back in 1993. Bill Hicks came out, did a killer set, but Letterman uh, decided not to air it, and it became this thing for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Letterman finally made good with Bill Hicks's mom. Sat her down. They discussed the controversy and how, and how it hurt Bill Hicks personally and hurt uh, Bill Hicks's family. And they they got into it. It was really good TV. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then David said, "What you know? We're playing it today, unedited." And they played the set <laughs> from 1993. This was on Friday. I thought it would get a little more attention than it did, but. It kind of like skated by a lot but of people. Friday's a weird time to do it. I know, I know. He kind of buried it, but it's on YouTube if you want to check out the whole thing. And uh, Letterman even admitted that he didn't see the set, you know, since it was done back in '93. Mm -hmm. It just sat on the shelves. So I don't know why, out of 
nowhere he decided to come up, you know, to do this. That is odd. I don't have the backstory on this. Is but the he anniversary just... of Hicks' death or his birthday or any I kind don't of know. special? That was the twelve thirty show that he was cut from. What you know now? Ninety three, right? Yeah. Right. So he's oh right. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. It's even more stringent at that, that is hour. Weird, like yeah. uh, that he d did this. Maybe he's like doing something where he's kind of getting a lot of things off his chest or something. Yeah, who knows? He's doing that whole apologize thing. and then Yeah, if someone has more info on that, maybe you could give uh, the show a call. Mm -hmm. But I, I got actually something that that adds to this. So Bill Hicks goes on Letterman 93, did Letterman dozens, of, at least a dozen times. I don't know how many times total. And uh, this, this set was banned. And then Bill Hicks went back to Texas, Austin, and he uh, talked about the whole banning of the Letterman thing on an, uh, on a public access show, and we got that audio today. Public access, and this is this is audio that uh, Letterman obviously didn't play. So we're just adding to the whole. Ooh, look at us! The whole story thing. Hmm. So I mean, the quality's shitty because it's public access, but I think we'll be all right with this. So Bill Hicks explains the appearance on the Letterman show and being censored after the taping. Recently, on the David Letterman show on October 9th, that I did the show. Taped the show at 5:30 in New York, and when at 7 p.m. was called by the producer and told that uh, I would be excised completely from the show. I of course asked why. The material had been approved and reapproved by the producers, <laughs> and they said that CBS had deemed the material, these are quotation marks, unsuitable for the viewing public and for the Letterman audience. And I made the point that when I'm not on the show, I'm a member of the Letterman audience. So ultimately what you're saying is my material is not suitable for me. <laughs> what a predicament. <laughs> God, he's smart ass. Uh, he's great, though, man. Uh, How come he's gone but Swayze lives on? <laughs> All right. Might have been a little rough. <laughs> Oh, if I have to see one more commercial for the Beast, shut up, all right? It yeah. looks like shit. The good ones die young. I Enough mean, already. Billy Joel said it perfectly. Yeah, it's look always, how old he is. Exactly. <laughs> then he hit a tree. <laughs> it's always the good ones that uh, that pass way of too course. soon. Always. Swayze's very intense. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you watch Trying the Beast. Trying to look all intense on that show. I know. Yeah. He looks now exactly like his brother who used to look like retarded Patrick Swayze and now, Patrick Swayze <laughs> now like he looks retarded. like retarded Patrick Swayze right, that's <laughs> like uh, Patrick Swayze's brother would show up on like some fucking he'd be playing a, an extra in a gang yeah you know and he'd be in the background and you're like Is fucking Patrick Swayze or something yeah. I, and then you get a look at him and go whoa that looks like a retarded Patrick Swayze and then at the end you'd see you know Aaron Swayze, or whatever oh, the fuck the his name, name is. is. I have no idea what his name is. Tom S Hanks something has, Swayze. Tom Hanks has a brother that's just been a zero. Oh, really? As Tom Hanks has been this huge Hollywood Isn't it like star. his twin brother or something? I don't they know, look looks... very similar. Find Tom Hanks' brother online. I saw it's him creepy. on a soap opera once. Yeah, and he tried to follow in his footsteps and not even close. Wow. Not even close. Probably he's... easy to follow in the footsteps at the beginning when he's like on Bosom Buddies, yeah. but then after you win winning Oscars and stuff. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a glorified extra. They give him a line or two to make him feel better. Remember that guy, Eric Douglas? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. His father Did is you? a gigantic yeah. movie icon, and his yeah. brother's a huge producer, and it's sad what happened to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oof. All right, as we find Tom Hanks' uh, brother's picture, uh, here's Bill Hicks. This is what a lot of people have been asking today. He explains the actual joke that prompted the removal of his set and then talks about the promo that aired on that night's Late Show. What happened was I did some material about uh, the pro-life people. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was uh, abortion. That abortion issue, that'll get you. Because there was some violence in his set. There was some violence. some uh, other religious <laughs> stuff, and then there was the uh, the abortion material. Mm -hmm. And the joke I did was very simple. All I said was, if you're so pro-life, do me a favor. Don't lock arms and block medical clinics. Lock arms and block cemeteries. Let's see how committed you are to this premise. <laughs> It could even be construed as pro pro life if you wanted to make that argument. Yeah. Anyway, they counted that as one of the quote unquote hot points that I touched on. Here's the punchline. Monday night during the Letterman show, a commercial airs for pro life. Mm -hmm. So see, we just had a misunderstanding. I thought I lived in the US of A, the United States right. of America. Right. And actually we live in the US of A, the United States of advertising. Freedom of expression is guaranteed if you've got the money. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah.
It could be true today, man. It could be true today. Oof. Uh, explains the Jesus joke that was also flagged as inappropriate. And other hot points I hit on on the set, which was, again, approved and reapproved by the Letterman segment producer. Until, of course, it was time to do it. Until after I did it. Until after it was done. And uh, the other material I touched on was uh, Jesus, which they don't want any discussion, which I find so funny. I mean, it doesn't matter what angle you take on it. The fact that a comedian's talking about Jesus, people, uh, people might construe it as sacrilegious. And in fact, it wasn't what I said. All I said was a lot of Christians wear crosses around their necks. You think when Jesus comes back, he's going to want to see a cross. It's just an observation. It's a great observation. Yeah. Why would you do that if you're hoping he comes back? Yeah, hey, check this out, Jesus. Remember this? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't go for that type of humor. No. You it's don't? It's not necessary, no. Why, uh, Christian Jimmy? I He's funny. I just don't feel that that's uh, <laughs> not that fast with the music. <laughs> I love it. It's either too fast or too slow. <laughs> I didn't even think you're Christian Jimmy. That's how tired I am. Oh, really? I thought you were going to go into Christian Jimmy. No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Well, fuck it. All right. <laughs> uh, Bill talks about freedom of expression, how the major media corporations want to keep the viewing public stupid. The point I'm making is about uh, the idea of freedom of expression. And I, and I believe that, uh, that there's this agenda in mainstream media, and I think it's fairly easy to back this up, to keep people stupid, docile, and apathetic, and therefore the elite who own these corporations and the families that own the corporations, even fewer people, their agenda is to keep us stupid and apathetic. That's why I love public access. Hmm. Wow. Uh, a little distracted because uh, Patrick in Boston, we just did a live read for Porn.com. He writes, I'm in a hotel in Connecticut trying to get work done. I heard the Porn.com ad by Danny and immediately checked out the site. It took 30 seconds to jerk off into one of the hotel <laughs> hand towels. I normally use the washcloth, but I didn't have a clean one left. <laughs> I have to read that for the advertiser. Right. Your, your advertising is working here on the OP Anthony seconds. Show. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, man, he was fighting the good fight back in 93. Why yeah. are we bothering? Because in 16 years, it's the same happened. shit we're, you know, we're dealing with or, or, or comedians in general are dealing with uh, and radio show hosts are dealing with. Uh, Dave likes him, but apparently had a rule about Jesus jokes. Dave likes me, but what I found out subsequently to all this, and, and oh, by the way, I don't mean to keep pushing my own little horn here, but uh, tooting my horn, but on Monday, this Monday, in, in the New Yorker magazine, there's a profile about me, including this story about Letterman. I found out that it's one of Dave's rules that he doesn't like comics to talk about Jesus on the show. Hmm. Which I find really weird. I mean, they, they pre pretend to be this hip, late-night hmm. talk show, when in actuality, they're as mainstream as anything. And uh, again, it doesn't matter what angle you take on the Jesus subject. That's what bugs me. Uh, just because I'm a comic doesn't mean I'm treating it with uh, disrespect. Wow. Yeah. Another brilliant point. Jesus. And then finally, uh, the last uh, clip of his interview with uh, Public Access Channel. <laughs> See, what they do is they kowtow to a minority that's very vocal. Reasonable people don't write letters. Reasonable people have lives. Yeah. <laughs> Reasonable people know it's just a joke. Reasonable people uh, know it's just TV. They know they can change the channel or they'll wait and something else will come on. Sure. Um, see, reasonable people don't get it active. It's these minorities, these fundamentalists who are totally organized, and they are a minority, and who are the ones trying to uh, set this agenda for America. And uh, they come to find out, they, you know, you know, I guess 14 million was his price. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone has a price, they say. Oh man! Luckily, I, I don't have any money, so it doesn't matter my price. Well, I'm wow. glad that problem got solved over yeah. the years, <laughs> and we don't have to deal with uh, any of that anymore. It's so funny to hear such an archaic way of uh, dealing with things. Amazing, right? Um, on on uh, that recording, and realize uh, just a few short years later, we're sure. so far away from that. So good to know that the corporations told those people to go fuck themselves. Yeah, Thank yeah, God. yeah. So, and they don't uh, kowtow to these yeah. small groups of people because normal. Uh, p working people that enjoy uh, entertainment uh, like that don't write letters. Right. Uh, but uh, we finally found that out when. Ooh, um, we sure did, Anthony. Well, and that was just after uh, the flying car came out. Yeah. Which was uh, <laughs> just a boon to mankind. 
<laughs> oh, we're still in this shit. We're still in it. This is what? 16 years ago. Fuck. And we're still fighting that horse shit. And you try to tell these corporate guys, why are you it's listening five to five people with letterhead? Why are you firing really good radio shows over, 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 uh, yeah, a group of yeah. 10 people? That then try to get some of their other people to write letters that never even heard the broadcast. They never heard the broadcast. Why are you doing this? Because they're cowards. You're taking yeah. away yeah. programs that a lot of people enjoy, way more people enjoy than hate. They're cowards, that's why. Because they don't fucking write. Because but you they think just, in 16 years, the point active. is that they would try to move forward and understand what this is all about. Realize that nothing is going to come of those people complaining if you just ignore them. Nothing will come of it. Right. Your business won't go down the shitter. You're not going to lose advertisers yeah. for any length of time or yeah. any any. It's not going to make an, an impact yeah. on your company. But we know the answer. It's because mm. they're cowards. It's that simple. Yeah, it's yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. That's the simple. Sixteen years answer. later, they continue to be cowards. Oh, They'd yeah. rather do the phony apology, which they don't mean. You think of some corporate spokesman gives a flying fuck when they make those statements to these uh, interest groups? Oh. Yes. We. Oh no. We sincerely apologize, and w if anybody was offended, you think this guy is sitting there at home going, God, I'm so upset with what that show did. I'm going to write this apology letter. They don't care. It's just another fucking thing to put in the outbox. I got a challenge. Yes, challenge. Give me the last apology that was sincere and real. Bill Clinton's apology was bullshit. All the apologies we've made over the years, bullshit. Yeah. And we've said before, if we ever are heard apologizing or even sounding like we're apologizing, we don't mean it. No. And the last so we have to say that beforehand, because when we're doing it, yeah. we have to kind of sound like we mean it just to keep yeah. our jobs. Um, you know. But well, you, uh, you hear Anthony crumpling up the, the paper in disgust yeah. after the last apology. But the hmm. apologies are never sincere. Name so. one. The, what was the last apology? John Candy and Uncle Buck. <laughs> Sorry. 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 <laughs> Just awkward in his own skin. <laughs> Sorry. How great was John Candy? <laughs> oh, that's the last apology that was sincere. That's a good question. Like when when Clinton went through that whole thing? <laughs> Please. He didn't mean any of that. Uh, Somebody will come up with one, maybe. See. No one in the audience has one. Mm. Hey, you want to hear Letterman now talking to Bill yes, Lisa's mom? Yes, very much. Uh, Karen yeah. Hill to uh, Henry Hill after she pulled a gun on him. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sincere. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That was sincere. Uh, of course, you're living in movie land again, Ant. Yeah. And there's this you know. one. This one is very sincere. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did so many bad things. I tell, sound very sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fucking bad lieutenant so good. I try to do the right thing, but I'm weak. I'm too fucking weak. <laughs> hey, that's great. Uh, where are we with Bill Hicks's mom? Did we cut that up today? Because it's, uh, it's a long segment. Yeah, with his it mom, really is. And it goes long. on, and it's like kind of. Kind of rough to listen to. Yeah, I mean, from what I from what I had heard, uh, you had wanted the set, which I do have for you in tracks. But uh, you said the mo you said the mom stuff was kind of whatever, so I didn't go. No, for after it. we discussed it, I, I want to play some clips from uh, Bill Hicks's mom, and then after that, you know what? I think the material should just sit there by itself without us commenting. So I want to just play right. the set. Okay. I think that's the way to do it today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's broken down in tracks, but I, I think in this case, let it let it roll. I think people will enjoy the set absolutely. 16 years later. Uh, Sincere apology. God damn it. This got me thinking. Mm. I can't think of one. I miss his apology. Are you mm, insane? Stop it. Stop it. Then he yeah. hires a Benetton ad to uh, keep him on the right. air. Yeah. Please. I'm sorry I did that. I'm trying to think. Now. I'm embarrassed that I, I did that. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed I did that. You think that was sincere? I'm sorry. I'm... Let's think about this for a second. You think no, he, I think he was annoyed. You think I, he was doing what he needed to do to try to save his job? Yes. Because that's what, where all apologies come from. Yes. He might have felt slightly bad. Like, you know, maybe that was fucked up. But no, I don't believe that was... They're self-serving apologies. Right, you, you only do them to... We, you you wouldn't right. give an apology out unless you it was something in yes. it for you. Yes. Yes. We're stalling because we're trying to get Bill Hicks's mom's uh, audio there. So let's go to... Uh, Al Roker's apology. Calling my thrilling story. commentary. Stalling? Jesus. Well, Thank you, Kenny, for my treat. <laughs> I think I was babbling. Uh, Rob in Tennessee, Rob. Hold on, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Put my treat there! <laughs> now that's a treat. Hey, Rob. Thanks, Kenny. Hey, Rob. 
Uh, I was just going to say what you guys thought about Dog the Bounty Hunter's apology there. No. It was, it was really either. sincere. Oh, my save God. Save your job you apology. Know what? Tim C. in Ohio might have Tim the, C. He might have the <laughs> only sincere apology that, that we all know. Yeah? Pick that up. I'm trying to think how I could tease this. Let's see. Who's Let's see. Sincere apology. You got to think way out of the box. Someone's generally... Think uh, genuinely way, sorry that's about the, that's the hint. When, when the Germans think, apologized for World War II and what they ugh, did, you got to no, think they don't way care. out of the box. John Lennon with the Jesus bit. Nah, that was mm. he was fucking trying to sell records, stay in the country and sell, yeah. you know, sell records. Um, Jerry Lee Lewis apologized to Granimals. <laughs> 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 Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Oh, Elliot I'm... Spitzer's apology? Stop. No. He was trying to save his job. Yeah. Yeah. Another one that was trying to save his job. And that's key to my uh, hint. This guy wasn't trying to save his job. Mm. Think way out of the box. Uh, out of the box? Ralph crammed into Trixie. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> he was apologized for fucking that black girl down the street. <laughs> Outside the pool hall. He ate her ass in an alley. <laughs> While Norton looked out for him. <laughs> I do remember that one. And then Teddy Oberman came in and fingered Ed's ass for a little while. While fucking, while oh, fucking. ate the black chick's ass. It was awful. It was so loud that Garrity was yelling from upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Teddy Oberman to quit smelling his fingers, Cramden. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Officer Grogan came over. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Pat in Connecticut. Mrs. Manicani <laughs> fucked herself what? with a zucchini. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While she watched. Oh, Carlos was fucking all the girls around the apartment building. <laughs> it's true. Alice had unclipped dick cheese on her upper lip, <laughs> and Ralph knew what she was doing. It's not dick cheese, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> it's feta. <laughs> feta. Fed. <laughs> hey, Pat, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the last sincere story I heard was when Anthony said he was sorry he ever got married. That's funny. Oh. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a different type of apology. That's me apologizing to myself. Yeah, yeah. Brian. Brian. Hey there, uh, Brian. You're Brian. on the air. You're on the air. Good evening. Boy, <laughs> you finally go to the phone. Going, going through puddles. Yeah. Uh -oh. like. yes, 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 Brian. Brian. Yes. Hey, this is Brian. <laughs> Hi, Brian. <laughs> really? We've just been saying, Brian, you're on the air for fucking like a minute. <laughs> Hi, Brian. I'm, I'm, I'm on the road. I can't hear you. I was going to say, waddle do Apologize. Wow. Oh, thank God that got through. <laughs> thank God. We, we, we almost missed that humor. Kyle in Alabama. I need a baby <laughs> lady. What's up, Kyle? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, what about a few years ago, the Beastie Boys apologized for their lyrics, and no one was really pressuring into, pressuring them into it. They just sort of came out of nowhere and said it. I don't have knowledge on that, my friend. I, I know an instance apology. Yeah. When uh, Alex came downstairs. Alex, oh, Jesus. Okay, I'll accept your apology for fucking having the timing <laughs> oh, of oh, diarrhea yeah, in the yeah, ninth inning. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cunt-faced bag of vomit. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to knock down up there? Uh, the Grand Theft Auto 4 um, glove. All right. <laughs> Just, yeah, don't worry. Let's me. go to John the Trucker. Here's the answer to the hint I gave that came from Tim. Go ahead, John. Yes, yeah, so a uh, sincere apology was Bud Dwyer's. Our Bud Dwyer. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he wasn't yeah, yeah. playing. You know something? He was genuinely sorry that he was such a douche. <laughs> and then he he wasn't trying to get his job back, now was he? No. Yep. I think. Eaterbullet.com, very good. So there you go. I think that could be the the last sincere apology yeah. is our Bud Dwyer. Done by a madman. My favorite but... comb over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, they're still cutting up the, uh, Hicks's uh, mom's audio. Oh. So quick break. We come back, uh, Letterman talking to Bill Hicks's mom from Friday's uh, Letterman show. And then the Bill Hicks set that was banned for many, many years and was just in hiding and on a shelf getting dusty, and yeah. Letterman finally decided to play it on Friday. We're going to replay it here today on our show. All right? Rock. Opie and Anthony. Never a big Black Crows fan either. But who the fuck am I? I'm Anthony. Hmm. We're back. 
Hope he's uh, taking a little leak. Wow, either a leak or a big shit. You're limping. <laughs> wow, that one really hurt. What's wrong with my Black Crows? I'm not a Black that. Crows fan. I was never a Black Crows well, fan. Why are they? They're kind of old school. Yeah. Nah, I, I, uh, what didn't you like about them? Their music. <laughs> Everything. Just, yeah, there's not a song I like from from Black Crows. What about Black Moon Rising? No, I don't. I, mm. wah, 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 wah. You not got a little a... Black Moon Rising? I don't know one song they do. Well, this is one. Well, this is one. <laughs> I don't recognize it except from the show. I just don't like it. They don't have Black Moon Rising in the Master Computer from... Uh, master I, Computer. I don't like them. That's too bad. Yeah, no, really not. That's one less bad. band I have to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Uh, the Bill Hicks mom stuff? Do we Bill, have it yet? Bill Hicks. In what, two minutes? What, what should we do for two minutes then? Just... What can we do for two minutes? You gotta make the stretch sound. Or, or, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. stretch. Oops. Uh, <laughs> Knocking over my Gatorade. <laughs> How about the Christian Bale audio? I don't have heard that. I don't, didn't hear the I Christian heard about Bale. it. I it's good for one more um, full uh, uncut play because it's so fantastic. That's like a minute and a half. Well, they're making yeah. sound uh, what, sound machines out sound of boards, it. Sound boards, yeah. Sound boards, I mean. Where you can then make prank phone calls. You're using... going to have all yours tomorrow, right? Yeah. For this side of the show? I have this one. Oh, da 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 I'm oh, da, 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 da. I gotta tell you what happens in this show. Like we we hear these clips and we're, and and it's a race to see who gets it on their machine. I am so jealous that you have that one. I might also have this. Fuck sake, man, you're amateur. Oh. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> that is classic for any occasion where an intern oh, fucks up, a call is stinks. Where is that about twenty minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were off the air during that. I probably should have oh. played it. Oh, you're killing me with this. Fucking amateur. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Oh, I want a whole bank of just Christian Bale yelling at his See, I got, I got, I got this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's me. Oh, da 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 Yeah, but do you have this one? I am proud to be a lesbian. A lesbian. Do you have this one? A classic? Oh, my God. Look. Space Shuttle Endeavor doesn't work anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, look at that. Pushing the button and everything. That's don't Hey, how about this one? Could you face that? Very beautiful girls, huh? Where were you tonight? The Kit Kat Club? You ever suck a guy's cock? Show me how you suck a guy's cock. The last time I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Can I tell? I got this one, though. Do the bit. Do the bit. That I like. Oh, and, and punt doesn't work. I'll get Eric. I don't know why. It's you can get a doggy style. You can get a lean right. on your side. Those are your only choices. This is my house, and I get the same. That's a good and one. And right is there. it true you hate just the black in the Black Crows, or oh uh, no, <laughs> no? If they were actually, called the Crows, would you be okay with this? Band? Just the Crows is a great uh, band. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This show is fucking bizarre, <laughs> isn't it? God. <laughs> Please do it. What? You're just watching us and going, what the fuck's wrong with us? I, I feel like when I'm not here for a while, I, I, I'm i like, you're speaking in pig Latin. <laughs> I have no idea what any of these bits are going to mean. No, you're, you're absolutely oh, right. Yeah. What do you need us to, to explain? No, not that I mean it's working. It's, I'm not, a, you know, what the fuck, you know, Why? you're not entertaining me. Yeah, we're just arguing over yeah. uh, who got the best sound effects. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, I hope he's got a fucking sound effect thing. I got one. Yeah. And okay. uh, now we got it like... The second a good clip comes out, we race to see who can who get it on their it. machine first. Because yeah. once it's on your machine, then it's, you know, oh, fucking out of the and public we, till. And we do a bunch of bits at the same time, because you got Stephen S. from Bayshore. Not surprisingly, Ant loves Whitesnake. Ah, all right. You don't like Black Sabbath, do you? I, I, I like the Great White. You love Black, Black Sabbath. Sabbath? I'm not really a big fan. I, I, oh, I, boy. I appreciate what they've done, but um, I'm not a big fan. Yeah. Interesting. Never thought of it in those terms. What's wrong, Sam? Oh, why are you rolling your fucking eyes? You know, it's a paradox. Uh, Barry White. Barry White. I don't know if I like him or not. No. <laughs> you like his name? <laughs> Very hard to decide. All right. So where were we? Remember when we were talking about Bill Hicks and the band <laughs> yeah. thing? Mm -hmm. So Letterman on Friday uh, brought Bill Hicks's mom in. So this is part two of our little discussion, I guess. Uh, here we go. Thank you very much for uh, being so gracious and so generous to come and uh, visit with us here so we could take a look at uh, uh, Bill's shot on the program that, that never got on. And, and let me again, if I haven't previously, just apologize 
uh, oh, this is sincere and and sadness that uh, my decision caused you oh, and your family, voice. and of course, uh, made all the worse by the uh, knowledge that uh, at the time Bill Bill was uh, terribly terribly sick, and then not not many people knew that, did they? Very few. Very few. Yeah. And I appreciate you saying that. Good call, Dave. Yeah, yeah. way to go, Dave. <laughs> Jeez, he was sick, and you just fucking shunned him from the show, Dave. You know what, though? Yeah. The other side of it, it gave uh, Mr. Hicks a lot of publicity. Yeah, of course it did. Good job, Bill. There was an upside to it. Mm. Uh, here we go. He always said when he was, up until the time he got interested in comedy, that he was going to Texas A&M to be a vet. Liar, whore, liar, whore, you know it. Hey, that wasn't part of, uh, you know, Dave should have Dave should have lightened up on the old broad. What the hell? I don't remember seeing it that way on Friday. What? Let me make sure everything's okay over here. That's just, that was unnecessary of Mr. Letterman. Yeah. Texas A&M to be a vet. Oh. He loved animals, and uh, that's what he wanted to do. And then he he got uh, interested in watching uh, Johnny Carson, mm -hmm. and he read books uh, about Woody Allen. So he got interested in that. He said that he saw uh, Johnny see where Carson where he got his comedy TV chops from. Thought, you mean you can make a living doing that? So <laughs> Jeez, Dave. He's pumping it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking That's... Vito Corleone in the fucking tomato patch again. He's <laughs> 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 doing a little punching up. That's all. He does that. He's spelling it. How, how did you... Uh... How, how did you feel about coming here tonight? Was was this a, an, an easy uh, decision for you to make? I, I mean, I was. Uh, I, th I thought. Were you surprised that I accepted. Well, I, well, I, I... <laughs> Believe, I'm surprised when anybody yeah. comes here. I... No, it was a surprise. But but part of me uh, thought, well, she has every reason not, not to, to come. come here. That's yeah. right. I had yeah. a lot of reasons not to come. <laughs> wow. And I thought about it. And then I decided to come. Good. I'm glad you're here. Mm. Damn. And, and, and again, I, I know I can't make up for the damage that was caused, but I hope symbolically this means something to you. Well, it does. Right. And, and I will tell you Shut that, your that was a very pie. hard time. <laughs> Fifteen years ago yes. when that happened. And I just will have to tell you that it was. Well, I'm well aware of that. I'm so uh, I, I, I don't so know. Scared. Oh! Personally, how difficult it was, but I can certainly, now that I have a son, I can Absolutely. certainly imagine imagine what that. You had to have a child to know. Right. Okay, what else? You want to know? <laughs> What's she say? Huh? What'd she say? What else do you want to know? Oh, so. Asshole! There you go. There's some uh, audio of Bill Hicks's mom. Ah, da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> People want that as a ringtone immediately. That's yeah. like, oh, that's a great ringtone. That would be a great. I don't know one. how to download ringtones. It's easy. I don't know how to do it. I get frightened. Mm -hmm. this, is what, this is what you do. You take your phone, right, and you hand it to Daddy. <laughs> so effing easy. Oh, I get frightened. Just hand over the phone. I don't know what I'm. What do you doing. want as a ringtone? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh da 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 da. Oh da da da. da, 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 da. Get it. Oh da 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 da. <laughs> oh, this mother. One, when a text comes in. Fuck's sake, man! You're amateur. Oh, who be could nice that on the be? Train. <laughs> All right, you guys. This one. This is a giant cock. Oh, good. It's, that's the one I put for my mom when she calls. <laughs> <laughs> it's mom on the phone. <laughs> that's how you know it's mother. <laughs> mother. That would be a funny one for your mom. Wouldn't it? <laughs> and a picture of a big cock comes up on the yeah. fucking display. <laughs> Mom always liked the big cock. Yeah, she sure did. The old size queen, and you give her the old chin punch. Mom's a size queen. <laughs> if it ain't black, it ain't worth it. Right or wrong, Ma? Want to play the Bill Hicks thing and end the show today? Do the bit! Let's do this. So uh, this is the set that was banned for 16 years that Letterman finally played on the show on yeah. Friday. I think it's worth playing again today. 
Uh, let's get the plugs in because we'll we'll leave uh, the people with this. Yes, we're, we're... Otto and Otto and George will be at the Treehouse Comedy Club in Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah, all you Connecticut people, come out and see me on Trish, Saturday. Trish just told me I wasn't talking enough on the show. I just ate a turkey sandwich. I'm I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm slipping into <laughs> darkness here. <laughs> slipping into darkness. Yeah, yeah that'll yeah, do you it. You should talk more. That's all right. <laughs> the whole... Say anything at home? She's either shut up or she's on the phone. <laughs> Otto, you should talk more. Your grandson Frank. <laughs> <laughs> you you killed today, bro. Yeah. You did very well today. We do the show every day. There are times we check out for a long period of time. Oh, I please. That's no how it is. to impress anyone at this point. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's better to push I less. Yeah. I said first. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Otto's doing that, and then you got the brokerage on the 18th of February. Yeah. For everybody on Long Island. That's where I first met you out on the island. That's where I met him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forty dollars shoes. <laughs> All right, we'll leave you with the Bill Hicks thing. Yeah, I have a plug. Agree. Oh, Caroline's tomorrow through Sunday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my Artie gig, Artie, well, the, our gig, that my gig with, it's our gig. Sure, February twenty first in uh, Tower Theater in Upper Darby. And you can go to LiveNation dot com for those tickets, unless you don't want them. Mm. Then don't. But you'll see, Jim. I want to go to Caroline's. I see you, Caroline's. You should come this weekend. I have a whole thing I'm doing now. What do you do now? It's where I take people's driver's licenses. And I guess things about them. <laughs> but I guess things that are not on the license. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. When did you incorporate that into the act? Brand new. Ah. Like I just like I'll take your license and I'll do something with it. I'll do say, you put oh, it by my... your head? Yes. Yeah. Like if the guy's name is Chip. Mm-hmm. I'll say, um, Chip, and I'll guess something about his life. And wow, wow are you good at it? Very you? good so far. All oh, right. <laughs> sounds like a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do this. Like, I'll say this. I'll do something like this. Like, uh, but I'll sneak a peek at it. Like, oh, what I'll do oh, is this. Oh. I'll hold the license, and as it's coming to my head, I'll peek at it, and I'll go, uh, Chip. And you they'll were, be like, fuck. Uh, you were born in 1978. And it's against your head, so yes. people don't think you could see it, but you saw it while it was coming up to your head. Yeah. Fucking amazing. That's now right. you just told the trick, though. Yes. Yeah, so you can't do it anymore. And then Ernie Hudson comes out, and he fucks Chip's face. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind the curtain at Caroline's. <laughs> and, and he comes out as tumor, and he drops a honey jar tumor. on Chip's face, and he fucks it. <laughs> he, he breaks a jar of honey over Chip's head. <laughs> Gets his head all sticky. <laughs> you know Tuma just had a fucking baby uh, arm. Tu tumor had a cock that was, it was as long as it was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Tuma, Tuma, stupid Tuma. Oh, Tuma was a dope, <laughs> but what a hog! Oh boy, big cock, a lot of dogs and some bees. <laughs> <You> fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> big fat, like red head on it. Like a dog dick. <laughs> I gotta see that movie again. Yep. All right. Uh, yes, Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks from 1993. It was banned until this past Friday. Letterman uh, finally did the right thing. Here it is. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.